has been building throughout the day. There is nothing quite like LSU Florida. And tonight, we feature a pair of quarterbacks whose confidence is brimming. Graham Mertz, fifth in the country in completion percentage. Reset button on his career when he arrived in Gainesville. And a Heisman candidate, Jaden Daniels, one of the best in the country, will look to take another step towards New York City with a win tonight. Saturday night presented by T-Mobile 5G home internet a sellout crowd tonight at Tiger Stadium to see the Florida Gators and the 19th ranked LSU fighting Tigers this is a series that never disappoints and Brian Kelly's team still has plenty of their goals in front of them here come the Tigers If they could finish without a loss and win their bowl game, it'll be another 10 win season for Brian Kelly and company. In a series that has been downright absurd. They first met in 1936, and it is dead even 33 wins apiece with three ties, and a series in which you can expect the unexpected. No question about that. Welcome to the sellout crowd. Tom Hart, Cole Kubelik. We've got Alyssa Lang down on the field. And what we have tonight in LSU. Is one of the best offenses in college football, led by a true Heisman candidate, Jaden Daniels. But he needs to continue to win and have this team continue to win if he wants to take home the hardware. Well, he'll get a logo win tonight against the Florida Gators if they can find a way to take this one home. And like you said, Tom, closer to a Heisman trophy, this young man has been dynamic. I would say he's been the most difficult player to defend in college football. Say what you want about the Heisman trophy. Leader in total yards in all of college football, second in total touchdowns. Where he's changed from a year ago, that ability to get through his progressions, not having to rely on tempo and pace, has made him almost unstoppable. Daniels had to deal with some hardship, a limited week coming off of concussion protocol. He did not practice Tuesday. For more on that, let's go down to the field. Here's Alyssa Lane. Tom, I talked to head coach Brian Kelly pregame about Jaden Daniels. He said Friday evening continued to go well for his quarterback into today. He's confident with Jaden Daniels' ability to lock in and how confident his quarterback feels coming into tonight watching Jaden go through warm-ups throwing against air he looked accurate his receivers coming over hitting him on the shoulder pads giving him little pep talks in the end zone he's dancing around with his guys he looks about as loose as I've ever seen Jaden Daniels throughout his career here at LSU no question he was a difference maker with his legs and with his arm meanwhile on the other side for Florida what a difference one more win could make their one win from bowl eligibility that's the good news the bad news is they close with three consecutive ranked teams. Tom, it might be the most difficult close that any team has in all of college football. When you look at not only the teams that they have to do it against, but where they have to go do it. Five and four, one more win needed for a bowl game. Here in Death Valley, go to Missouri on November the 18th. And of course, that rivalry game against Florida State, a team that most likely is going to be playing for a spot in the college football playoff. Both Missouri and Florida State won in convincing fashion today. Florida State now 10 and all, Missouri to care of business against Tennessee. It is a sellout crowd for this series. It has been uninterrupted since 1971 and one in which every game seems to show you something you never quite expected and you may never see again. And it's a series that LSU has dominated as of late. In fact, since the head ball coach left Gainesville, the Tigers have won 14 of the last 21 meetings head to head with the Gators. And it's a little bit different at night where LSU has won 10 consecutive games 
under the lights here at Death Valley. They've been prepping for a while for this one. LSU disappointed last week against Alabama, but you wouldn't know it by the crowd here tonight. Still plenty of opportunities in front of Brian Kelly's program the rest of the way. Florida won the toss. They have elected to defer, so LSU will start with the football. Trey Smack will put it on a team, get us started tonight in front of 102,000. Caleb Jackson set to return. Gators coming off of a disappointing loss at home to Arkansas. They've got something to prove. A bunch of Louisiana natives on their roster as well that are looking to make a difference here tonight. As they played their high school ball in this state, felt like they were overlooked by the home state team. Weather shouldn't be an issue. It's cool in the 60s. Might see some drizzles throughout the night. But I'm told it never rains at Tiger Stadium. And we are underway on this Saturday night. And no return for LSU. And we bring out the senior from San Bernardino, California, by way of Arizona State, Jaden Daniels. Did not participate in practice Tuesday, but he leads the country in total yards, leads the SEC in passing yards and passing touchdowns. And according to ESPN Bet, currently sixth in the Heisman odds. He'll start with Josh Williams at tailback. LSU will be without Logan Diggs. He's out for tonight, seventh in the league in rushing. Neighbors comes closer. He's the nation's leading receiver. And Daniels looking for him on first down. There he is, and it is contested and incomplete. Coverage on the back end by Jalen Kimber. Knocked out of the game a week ago, Tom. Only game not over 300 yards this season, and he has been magnificent directing traffic at the line of scrimmage, getting his team inside and out of plays, protections. The epitome of field general for the LSU Tigers this season. He's got a great one in neighbors, back-to-back 1,000-yard -back receiving seasons. On uh, second and 10, LSU goes to the ground game, and they find one from Josh Williams, Tyreek Sapp. And we got some extra pushing and shoving. Tensions were high pregame. There about a dozen different skirmishes that nearly boiled over into something more serious. And I guess we wouldn't be surprised if that happened in game. Absolutely not. There, a lot of tension on the field pregame. Multiple players going down to the other side of warm ups. A lot of chirping, a lot of chattering. Some coaches had to break some things up. I think State Troopers got involved. <laughs> Third down nine. LSU's best in the country, converting a 56% of their third down opportunities. A big reason, Daniel's legs. And he's got to use a timeout here with the play clock getting down to double zero. Timeout, LSU. So Austin Armstrong, the defensive coordinator for Florida, showed Daniel something he wasn't expecting. On the LSU side, this offense has been absolutely incredible, led by Daniels, and really committed himself in the offseason to extended film study. Here are just three of the Heisman contenders. Michael Penix Jr. threw for 300 tonight. Washington got the win over Utah. Bo Nix is now at Oregon, and he's had a remarkable season. And there's Daniels, who, among all ball carriers in the SEC, is eighth in yards per game. I think sixth in the SEC in rushing yards. He's just been dynamic in every way for this LSU offense. You mentioned what Penix did today. Bo Nix has USC tonight, so those numbers are going to take a gigantic leap. I'm already hating on the USC defense, huh? It's just facts. So third and nine coming out of the timeout. It's a double A-gap pressure Austin Armstrong talked to us about. He might hit early on third down. Manny Nunnery, number 34, right in the middle. Over the center, Charles Turner. They roll the pocket, and Daniels converts on third down. This is Malik Neighbors down the hashes. And Neighbors takes it into Florida territory on another third down conversion. This one goes for 39. 
I love moving the pocket to avoid pressure. There's that double A gap blitz that we mentioned. Both linebackers coming up the middle of the field. Get your quarterback out of harm's way. LSU leads the country in explosive plays. In fact, they had 11 of them last week against Alabama. 77 plays this season coming in of 20 yards or more. Daniels to throw on first down. Here comes the pressure. There goes Daniels. Eludes another, and he dances his way for a first down. And wow, that is a real challenge to try to bring this guy down. That's a 15-yard run for Daniels. And you see graphically just how explosive this LSU offense is. Scooby Williams, linebacker 17 for Florida, has the angle on Jaden Daniels. Tom, see why he's just so difficult to defend. Neighbors on the right side next to Mason Taylor who will motion. Opening drive for LSU. And this is Neighbors getting a chance to run it. And he'll take it inside the 10, inside the 5, and the little pitch. That'll go as a pass and an 18-yard gain. Now first and goal for LSU. One of the things that makes that difficult to defend, a dirty stack as Florida defensive coordinator Austin Armstrong described to us. They get a little separation, not right behind each other, those receivers for LSU. Williams, the running back, takes it straight ahead, trying to shove that pile. It's still moving. And he's right outside the goal line. Scooby Williams, first one to meet up with Josh Williams. Second and goal for LSU. Williams featured back tonight. And he dives in for the LSU score, his fourth touchdown of the season. And the Tigers strike first. They only needed seven plays to cover 75 yards. And already, neighbors with the 56 yards receiving on the night. Damian Ramos on for the point after. And the point after good for Ramos. LSU using its best players early. Jane Daniels to Malik Neighbors for 39 early. Then this little touch pass. Gives him another 18. Set up the first to goal. And the Tigers are out front early on the Gators on this SEC Saturday night. Let's take a look at Fansville brought to you by Dr. Pepper and some purple and gold royalty in the house tonight. Andrew Whitworth, Super Bowl champion, national champion, Jamarcus Russell. Number one pick. And oh, you want baseball? We got baseball. Jay Johnson's guys are here. There's Paul Skeens. Most outstanding player of the College World Series and Shaq Fu in the house. You know it's a big game when Shaq is here. You know it's big when Alyssa has to look up to her interviewee. Shaq has the best view in the house here, seeing over top of all these people. Shaq, what's it like being back here for a game like this? Well, I always try to come back once a year. Well, I do come back once a year since I left in uh, 92, but great atmosphere. A uh, really good football team. It's going to be a great game today. I hope our guys can pull it off. So you were DJing at Fred's last night. I told you I was there. You said that this is all freestyle when you get up there. Walk me through that. I mean, I just try to, you know, play with the kids like I had to come with the uh, Baton Rouge song, I had to come with the LSU fight song, and I had to talk about, you know, Florida stuff. Have you ever considered a DJ name or just Shaq is enough? No, Diesel. Diesel. Yeah, just Diesel. Diesel. Yep, yep, just Diesel. Love it. Enjoy the game, Jack. All right, thank you. Uh, the biggest surprise that Alyssa was in the building at Fred's last night as Florida starts it off with the run over the left side of Florida team needing a win for bowl eligibility. They start on the ground with Montreal Johnson Jr. Their quarterback Graham Mertz making his 42nd career start tonight. A guy who's just brimming with confidence in Gainesville relative to what he was as a quarterback in the Big Ten at Wisconsin. Here's Ricky Pearsall. He's able to pick up a first down on the completion. Mertz is originally from the Kansas City area, Overland Park, Kansas, four seasons with the Badgers. Look at the number improvement once he got 
to Florida. Fifth in the country completion percentage. 17 touchdowns, only two picks. And on the ground for Montreal Johnson Jr. And he's able to pick up seven and a half on first down. What do you see when you watch Graham Mertz? What's the biggest difference in where did he find his confidence? He's decisive, Tom, and he's accurate. I think the accuracy was always there, but now just a system that's a little bit more comfortable for him and decisive where he wants to get the football out to. This is a quarterback-friendly system, but you have to master it to be successful. 190 now completions without an interception as he hooks up with the freshman Eugene Wilson the third who picks up the first down that is second only to Tim Tim Tebow in the Florida annals and honestly telling he wears that same number the main part of it is something that we just saw there his ability to check at the line of scrimmage his ability to say hey this play's tagged I can spit it out quickly to a wide receiver mentally he's come a long way to be able to manage all that in Billy Napier's offense this is an offense that does not ask him to stretch the field vertically as often as, say, Jaden Daniels in LSU. Pearsall in motion. Another one behind the line of scrimmage. This is Wilson again. 31% of Graham Mertz's passes are thrown at or behind the line of scrimmage. Why is that? It's an extension of the run game, number one. Billy Napier's never going to get away from wanting to be a run-first football team and control the pace and tempo and dictate what the defense does. It's just an extension of that when the defense gives you certain space on the perimeter. Lean in now, play action, and they're able to get it over the middle to Pearsall, who was a high school teammate, a uh, part of a college teammate of Jay Daniels at Arizona State. Well, this is just stealing free grass, as Roman Harper would call it. Right side of your screen, off coverage, take the slant. Easy pickings for Graham Mertz. They're going to go Bill Walton with that reference instead of Roman Harper. First and ten for Florida. Again to the slant. Pearsall again. And Florida marching down on its opening possession. That's a gain of 19. Once again, the decisiveness of Graham Mertz, Tom, that we discussed a little bit earlier. When he sees something he likes, he attacks it. He is five for five in this opening drive. This is Wilson, the freshman, and he's in. Nine-yard touchdown pass on the little toss to Wilson. His fifth of the season, and Florida wastes no time. Quick end around to Wilson, but you're going to play receiver in this offense. You're going to have to block. Look at one at the top of your screen. Ricky Pearsall, the number one weapon in this offense, not afraid to block, driving the defender out of bounds, opens up extra space for the touchdown. Trey Smack on for the point after. Special teams have been a journey for Florida this season, especially the kicking game. And Smack puts through the point after. 20 for 20 on extra points. You got a seatbelt, buckle it. Be weird to have it on the couch, but it might be that kind of night. Florida and LSU playing in a big one. Tied early on. SEC Saturday Night is presented by T-Mobile 5G Home Internet. Connecting homes across the SEC and in part by Mercedes-Benz. The vehicles are all electric. The feeling is all Mercedes. This series is always weird, borderline absurd. That's what the shoe throw was in 2020 in the fog in Gainesville. I don't know if we're going to get anything quite that weird, but it seems every other year something wild happens in this series. Twice the ball is blown off the tee for Smack. This is weird, all right? Opening drives for each. 301 off the clock. Florida needed eight. LSU just seven plays. He just made that up in the trunk. Could have. Jane Daniels, a couple of completions to Malik Neighbors on that opening drive. And there was a Heisman candidate. You know, usually when you lose the big game, as LSU did against Alabama last week, you, you fall off the Heisman board. I, I think Jake Daniels showed a lot of voters even more how important he is to this team. And with other candidates not necessarily running away with this thing, he is firmly in that conversation.
Taylor in motion. Daniels goes right over the middle to Chris Hilton Jr. And I agree with you specifically with how this LSU offense looked when he exited the game against Alabama, Tom. What it does is it allows the defense to defend you in a completely different way. So what is at stake for LSU tonight? Not just the goal of that 10-win season as he finds Taylor. And Taylor bends it back to midfield for a first down. But there have only been three Heisman Trophy winners in history whose team lost four games or more. And that, comes, that comes down to people like you that actually have a Heisman vote. How important is it to win all of your games, win the majority of your games? If it's the most outstanding player, how much does that matter? John Emory Jr. is now in a tailback for LSU. And here's Neighbors. Neighbors changing direction, looking for a block. Daniels trying to throw him one. Jason Marshall Jr. with the stop after a gain of six. I mean, honestly, where are you on that? Does it have to be a team in the top ten? Does it have to be a team in the top five? A one-loss team? It's, where do you draw the line, I guess, on, well, he's no longer a contender because his team didn't do this? you got to win big games. you got to be able to deliver in big games. And I wonder what would have happened with LSU had he not been knocked out of the Alabama game. There's Brian Thomas Jr. In that context, three winners in the last 20 seasons with three losses. Tebow in 07, RG3 in 11, and Lamar in 16. So it's not uncommon to be on a team that's not competing for a national championship at the end of the season and still take it home. Emory steps up next to him. And gets a touch on the right side. And Emory running with the burst. Product out of Destrehan High School here in Louisiana. That'll set up two yards to go to pick up the first down. A little bit outside zone. Mike Dinbrock, offensive coordinator for LSU, told me on the field before the game they wanted to get more of that in tonight. Daniels keeps it. And he hurdles a guy to pick up the first down. Manny Nunnery with the stop. The, the Florida defense is well aware of Jaden Daniels' value. They're also well aware that this guy takes hits. When we were here recently, I asked him, how would you coach young kids when it comes to your running style? And he said, don't do it like I do. <laughs> he took the hit last week in the Alabama game on the sack, but he also takes direct hits when he runs the football. Missouri squared him up multiple times in that LSU come back in Columbia. Emory sidesteps the man. And then he goes down inside the five with an injury, grasping that right leg after a pickup of 15. The first cut was incredible. And now John Emory Jr., one of the holdovers from the national championship team, being tended to by the LSU athletic training staff. This first cut in the vision was magnificent. And then Emory has had his leg give out on him and go to the turf. We'll be back to LSU in a moment. John Emory helped off the field moments ago. LSU looking at a first and goal. Josh Williams in the backfield. That's Brian Thomas Jr. in motion. Here's Williams. And he goes straight ahead. Jaden Daniels missed on his first pass of the game. Since then, both quarterbacks have combined to go 12 for 12, and we've had 22 consecutive plays that have netted positive yardage. Defenses have been a fitting tonight. Second and goal. Straight ahead. And Williams stopped just short. What do you like here on third and goal? I like moving that pocket again, giving Jaden Daniels the ability to just tuck it and run if he needs to. Saw that on a play earlier, first series of the game. Get him out on the perimeter. Emory talking with the training staff. This is the 10th play of the drive for LSU. They're already down. They're starting tailback and Logan Diggs unavailable tonight. Here's Williams. And Williams stopped at the line. 
fourth and goal for LSU. It was Jamari Lyons, a true freshman out of Cocoa, Florida, with the stop for the Gators. Well, it's just an excellent job kind of slithering through the line of scrimmage and being able to make contact in the backfield. LSU 5 for 11 on fourth down this season. They're going to go for it on fourth and goal. Daniels gives it up. Williams stopped again on a huge play by this Florida defense. Kelby Collins, a freshman. Scooby Williams, a sophomore. And this young Florida defense flexes its muscles early. Take you back to the third down run by Williams. See middle of your screen just coming right through that A gap. It's an excellent job by the defensive line occupying blockers to allow that run through. And just no push from the LSU offensive line. You said you'd like Daniels getting out of the pocket a little bit. What do you make of the same play two plays in a row? One thing that they did, Tom, you saw the tempo to the line of scrimmage. So tempo to the ball, not necessarily tempo to snap the ball. That limited Mike Denbrock in his options calling different plays. You're stuck in basically the same formation. I don't like going to it again. You tried it multiple times. It didn't work. You have a Heisman Trophy candidate at quarterback. Let him get the ball in the end zone. Daniels back on the headset. Mertz. Operating out of the end zone. From the one yard line, Trevor Etienne is his tailback. There's Pearsall in motion. And they're going to throw it. Mertz lobs it complete for a first down to Hayden Hansen. What a play call by Rob Sale and company. They are masterful at flooding one side of the field. Great play action there by Mertz pulling that thing back, and he'll take the second level option to his tight end. He had the receiver in motion in the flat, tight end next, and then the deep over after that. Tight ends have been key for Florida, especially the last couple of games. And Mertz with a perfect start, seven for seven. ETN finds the edge and somersaults forward to pick up nearly eight on first down. ETN and company. Playing with a little of emotion. He's a sophomore from Jennings, Louisiana. Backfield mate Montreal Johnson Jr. Started his college career playing for the Raging Cajuns. He's from New Orleans. They both said this week, yeah, a little extra motivation getting an opportunity to play in Tiger Stadium against our home state team. On second and two, Mertz pulls it back. Goes right back to his tight end Hanson and he takes dudes with him to pick up 10. Mertz eight for eight. The time you see all that pre snap movement from Billy Napier tight ends shifting trading back forth then you get a motion late LSU defense having trouble getting set up. There are a lot of limitations to what Matt House has to work with on the defensive side of the ball this season for LSU. ETN into the pile and he picks up a yard and a half. Meanwhile, John Emery Jr. will head back to the locker room with the aid of some crutches in the athletic training staff. We hate to see that. Young man runs hard. He's been kind of in and out of this lineup for this LSU football team. Dynamic when he is healthy and in the lineup, though. So second and eight. Mertz. First miss of the night. A little high to Ricky Pearsall. Florida offense, which has found some green grass against this LSU defense, which has struggled all season. When you look at the rankings for LSU defensively, this is a young team, especially in the secondary. They brought in a couple of transfers that didn't pan out and won't finish the season. And they are exposed at the back end. First third down of the night for the Gators. Four-man rush. Hurts pressure. Ball came out, and it's LSU football. And that LSU defense makes a monster play. It's the freshman Jamie and Tomiano who finds it. Braden Swinson knocked it out. Watch left side of your screen. That 
right hand just strong on the left tackle, able to get back inside, force the fumble by Graham Mertz. Thought he had time to set up in the pocket. Pressure coming from his blind side. There you see him get the tackle spun, get into the backfield and force that tackle. A fumble by Mertz. Just an excellent one-on-one -on -one win. Mertz has been sacked 27 times this season, fifth most in the country. And there's a solution for protecting your weak back end. Meanwhile, freshman from just down the road, Liberty Magnet High School, Caleb Jackson, is in a tailback. LSU's depth will be tested there. Jackson, a true bowling ball of a running back. He had a play against Mississippi State where he just trucked a dude and then stood over him. Brian Kelly told us, Tom, that he had a, a big soccer background. Kind of that was how he came up. And he didn't really start playing football until his junior year of high school. And I asked BK about that a little bit more on the field before the game. And he said, everybody told me when I first got here, I need to go see this young man. So we go over to a soccer practice or a football practice, excuse me, to check him out. And he said, well, is he a kicker? He said, no, you just got to go watch him. You have to go see what he can do. Aaron Anderson in motion. Here's Daniels pulling it back and firing on the sideline and incomplete. Well, one of the reasons he may have been more of a soccer player than football is Liberty Magnet didn't have a varsity program until his junior year. So could have played junior varsity for a little bit, but three miles from Tiger Stadium at Liberty Magnet, all he did in 11 games and 21 as a junior was rush for 2,400 yards and 33 touchdowns. Not bad. Brian Kelly said when he went to that practice, nobody had pads on. Kelly said, why am I here? What are we doing? Why does nobody have pads? He said, well, if he puts pads on, everybody else gets hurt. <laughs> well, yeah. I mean, you barely have enough to feel the team. Can't have them hurting people. Noah Kane in. He's their best blocking back now. And third and five. Pressure coming. Daniels trying to escape. It's taken down from behind. They brought pressure from Jaden Hill. And we got pushing and shoving after. Right over the Florida sideline. Pressure going to come from the left side of your screen. Tight end comes out, tries to pick up the defender off the edge. Jaden Hill, nice little move back inside, and then a little extra from these teams over on the Florida sideline. And you know if the quarterback gets hit, uh, an offensive lineman's going to be right by his side. It was Emory Jones. Mike Emory Jones was just kind of the one hand, like, come on, buddy, we're going, we're, we're out. You're good. Initially, that was a great pickup from the LSU offensive line. I feel like Jaden Daniels needs to have an idea, though. That many defenders lined up. The pressure that Armstrong usually brings got to get the ball out. They're going for it on fourth and six. That stopped on a fourth and goal on the last possession. Daniels from the logo steps up. And he gets sacked in the second consecutive play. Go back to the decision from Brian Kelly to go for it on fourth and six. I like Brian Kelly being aggressive. We've got a Heisman Trophy candidate quarterback on the field. Odd range as far as punt field goal. I like the moving your quarterback as well. We talked about it a little bit earlier down near the goal line. But Jaden Daniels has to understand that ball comes out. It's an excellent job. Front side by 15, Derek Wingo. Wingo made one of those big plays down near the goal line. Looking to run right through Josh Williams. That forces Jaden Daniels back inside to the middle of the pocket. And the Florida defenders there to help him out. Twice, LSU's been stopped on fourth down. And now Grant Mertz and the Gators back at it. You didn't like that decision, though? I don't mind it from midfield. But to your point, your quarterback's got to make a better play. I, I think what I'm getting at is we're seeing inside Brian Kelly's mind this is going to be a high-scoring game if they're going to go for it on fourth and six here in the first quarter. Montreal Johnson is stopped for no game. And in fact, we've got a lot more shoving. And we got a flag. Get to the chippiness, but Mike Denbrock, the LSU offensive coordinator, was telling us, yeah, I got an idea usually how many points we're going to have to put up. Last week it was going to have to come out and score 35 right off the bat. After the play, personal foul, unnecessary rookies, number 76, offense. 15-yard penalty, second down. This is Damian George, Jr., the right tackle. 
feel like Damian George is going to be lucky that he didn't get ejected from this game. It's not a punch, but easily could have been seen that way by an official. And Omar Spates did get up in his face initially, kind of gave him a little bit of shove right before that. George is not happening. Do you think that draws a flag if he hits him in the chest as opposed to the helmet? It's easier to sell when you go to the face. Give the little neck, neck roll, the neck bomb. And it leaves Mertz and company with a second and 25. Mertz on play action. He finds Johnson out of the backfield. Quickly surrounded. Gain a seven. See, that's an area, Tom, where a lot of people will complain about Graham Mertz, and they'll say, oh, you check down Charlie, whatever it is. Doesn't push the ball down the field. He's running the offense. The rest of the receivers are covered there. You take what the defense is giving you. And when we return, Florida will be looking at a third and long. Emotions running high in Death Valley tonight. It's LSU in Florida. These two teams know each other well. They've met every season since 1971, and it is chippy tonight. On the emotion. Say to your team to balance the emotions right now. <laughs> you know what? I actually like it, to be honest with you. Okay, we came here to compete, and um, got to go toe to toe. Got to go punch for punch. Now look, I've got no respect for undisciplined play like that. We'll get that under control, but our crew's here to play. Thank you, coach. All right. That Absolutely answers, love it. Yeah, that speaks to this rivalry, doesn't it? Absolutely. And I love the fact that Billy Napier obviously told his football team, we're going to have to come here and play physical brand of football to get a W tonight. Third and 18, Merch screaming to check at the line. Four-man rush. And Merch trying to use his legs, pull a Jaden Daniels. There's a flag down, two of them, as a matter of fact. What would be a 12-yard run. And Mertz chirping with the LSU side. Busy night for the guys in stripes already. Steve Marlowe is our referee. Holding. Office number 58. Emily is declined. Fourth down. That's a left tackle, Austin Barber, who has started every game at that position this year. Austin Barber just over at left tackle. You have to allow that defender to disengage when he wants to go track down the quarterback. You don't like it. I don't like it. The hand, yes, is on, it's on the breastplate of the defender, but is he grabbing him, holding him, preventing him from detach and go chase that quarterback down? No, I don't believe that he was. Here's former New South Welshman Jeremy Croshaw from Australia to punt it away. Like many from Pro Kick Australia played Aussie rules. This is a beauty of a punt. Taken by Gregory Clayton Jr., 45 yarder. Reminds me of our guy Brad Wing. We saw that on the field before the game. Well, that play, the Brad Wing had celebrating on his fake punt, belongs in the history of this great rivalry. Ask First time him. I've ever seen a punter get flagged for celebration. Ask him about that. He goes, Yeah, the celebration play. And I said, Right down here in this corner of this end zone. He's like, Yeah, mate. He made it back to the league this year, didn't he? Earlier this season? All I know is we had him in the XFL, and he told me how much he loved trying to talk to us about punting in the <laughs> XFL. I don't think any of the viewers cared, but we tried to get him to talk about it. Daniels six of eight, but he's been stopped twice on fourth down. Or at least LSU has one on a sack, one on a fourth and goal run. Looking for Mason Taylor, too strong. Oh, the wheel route was there from Taylor. Almost a little bit of a rub concept here as well. You see Scooby Williams out in coverage. Ah! Just get picked right there by Malik Neighbors and had that round as you stated, Tom. Jaden Daniels does not miss many of those. Daniels on second and ten. Taking a deep shot down the left side. That is hauled in by Brian Thomas Jr. Give him another shot, he will cash in, and that one goes for 41. 
There's no looking a defender off. There's no second guessing this, no thinking about it. Jane Daniels knows exactly where he's going right out of the gate. That's with cushion. You cannot place a ball any better than that to Brian Thomas in the bread basket. Florida missing a key member of their secondary. Cornerback Devin Moore is unavailable tonight. Daniels now starts to run. Runs right past one, splits two more, gets the sideline. Jaden Daniels is something special. And he dances his way to a gain of 38. Not a bad job rushing the quarterback. They stay even with him, but this is where I think he separates himself from all other Heisman Trophy contenders, Tom. And Josh Williams out in front, give him another nice block. He's thrown for 140. He's already run for 52. Blake Lock at three. Daniels looking in zone. And just a hair wide to Brian Thomas Jr. Let's talk about what Jaden Daniels missed this week. He missed practice on Tuesday, was not a full participant. He was there. He was present. He had to work through the concussion protocol to get cleared. What does a quarterback miss if they can't participate on Tuesday of game? A lot of install on a Tuesday. Tuesday's your heavy work day. And it's your, usually your first day back on the practice field in pads. So this late in the season, it's, it's not that big of a deal in my opinion, but you want him out there. He pulls it back on second and 10, and they got him by the ankle. It's Manny Nunnery, and it's a loss of three. Just a run through here from Manny Nunnery, missed by the LSU offensive line. But I believe Will Campbell, over on the right side of your screen, tries to come off a little bit late and just can't go low and get him down. Nunnery's coming off of a season-high 10 tackles and in on a sack in the loss to Arkansas last week. On his first real action last week, did some good things. Austin Armstrong told me he's a good athlete. Like what he brings to the table, AAC Special Teams Player of the Year a season ago. Seven starts with Houston in the American. Houston. LSU one of three on third downs tonight. And they're going to have to burn another timeout with the play clock getting late. Timeout, LSU, the second of the half. And that's the second time Daniels has had to use a timeout, trying to get on the same page with his center with the play clock running out. Garino Kane Studio with our road to the championship presented by Mercedes-Benz. We know Georgia's going to travel that road to Atlanta for the SEC title. Will they do it unbeaten? Looks good so far against Ole Miss. Dejon Edwards and Kendall Milton into the end zone. They're up 14. Guys. Hi, Dari. Thanks. The reservations in Atlanta sealed when Missouri dispatched Tennessee 36-7 today. Here's third down for LSU. Pressure coming up the middle. Daniels to the outside that's complete the Brian Thomas Jr. for only three. Well, the young defensive coordinator Austin Armstrong has taken advantage of that aggressiveness. Showing a lot of different looks overload fronts so he's putting more defensive linemen on one side of the center than the other and just showing a lot of pressure too, Tom with different personnel. Not a coincidence, he wears that visor. Third grade career day, he went as Steve Spurrier. It's his mom's favorite coach. Damian Ramos on for the field goal. This will be a 28 yard attempt. And LSU looks to reclaim the lead. And the knuckleball goes through. <laughs> 79 yard drive that time for LSU. It's Break down what Jay Daniels has been able to accomplish here so far tonight. We've seen some confusion at the line of scrimmage with some of the recognition, but on early, move the pocket. I love the call from Mike Denbrock, and obviously Yak Yards catch and run. Malik Neighbors, one of the best in country at that, knew exactly where he was going to go on this corner route to Brian Thomas Jr., and this is where I think he really excels. And when there's just not a lot of other individuals that are anywhere near his category, the ability to know when to leave the pocket, how to leave the pocket, being decisive, and legitimate breakaway speed when he does it. He is a loose runner out on the perimeter that can make you miss and run away from you and just makes him electric and dangerous. Last year led the nation in rushing yards by quarterback second so far this season. Nathan Dybert will kick it away. 
Trevor Etienne back to receive. They this are. is a ground ball that will kick out of bounds at the one. And that'll tag on extra yardage for Florida. Let's take a look at tonight's easy choice brought to you by Geico. Well, Florida quarterback Graham Merce done an excellent job with his eyes holding a safety or pulling a safety away from a certain part of the field to be able to open up space and complete passes. So that one last week against Arkansas, similar here against South Carolina, yet he adds a little bit of a pump fake, knows exactly where he's going, gets those shoulders turned, gets the feet reset, and delivers a strike on the win route to Ricky Pearsall. It's just a, one of the areas that he has improved so much, that recognition, the understanding of it's not just dropping back and surveying the defense, how to hold a safety at a certain spot, knowing your receiver is going to win that win route and then deliver an accurate ball. The Florida team trying to snap a two game losing streak lost to Jacksonville to Georgia. To close October then home to Arkansas. And the Florida program has not played well away from home. Just two wins in the last 16 games away from the swamp. Mertz. Got to run for it last possession and gets dragged down behind the line of scrimmage this time. A sack for Paris Shan. Well, it's a good decision by Mertz not to try to force the football in. We'd like to see him just put this one out in the stands. So you have slide protection and Shan, just great second effort, comes back in front of the offensive line to track Mertz down. Second and 11. And they'll run it with Trevor Etienne. Picks up four. Boy, big push there by Jordan Jefferson. 99 on the inside of that LSU defense. And he hadn't racked up the stats this year, but he's been very effective setting up a third and long. Third and seven now for Florida. Gators 0 for 2 on third down to They'll empty the backfield for Mertz. Timeout. LSU. The third and final of the LSU is out of timeouts with ten and a half minutes left in the first half. And the Gators will be looking at a third and seven when we return. Happy Veterans Day and thank you to all who serve Florida and LSU well represented. Well, as always, this time of year, we salute all of our nation's veterans, past and present, as we take a look at some of the courageous soldiers from around the globe, proudly showing off their school pride and well represented with the Florida football program. And a special thank you and salute to Rick Hurtado, Florida Director of Football Communications, United States Marine Combat Correspondent, Public Relations Specialist, served for four years, Camp Pendleton to Iraq, Kuwait, Philippines, and Thailand, producing over 500 multimedia products highlighting the work of the U.S. troops worldwide. Thank you for your service, Rick, and all veterans, including those on our crew working hard tonight. They're down seven, five-man rush to Pearsall for the first down. It's a great read by Graham Martz. He sees that soft cushion right side of your screen again. Protection, good up front, overloaded to the left side. They slide it that way, pick it up. Pearsall's going to win with 10 yards. A fresh set of downs, and this is Eugene Wilson, the third. Tampa product at a Gaither High School, and he is really coming on strong. Three touchdowns and 185 yards receiving over his last three games, including two touchdown performance against the Razorbacks last week. And Matt House telling us, Tom, he was one of the main guys that he was they were concerned about defensively because of his ability to run so many different routes and be explosive when he does get the football in his hands. That Eugene two-time Super Bowl champ with the Patriots. On uh, second and six, it's ETN. And he gets hit just past the line of scrimmage by big number 99, Jordan Jefferson. I'm telling you, he's had a monster season. 
doesn't have all the TFLs and you know, doesn't make all the quick twitch plays in the background, but you're talking about doing the dirty work, striking and shedding, utilizing hands. He's been big for this LSU defense this year. Not much depth on that LSU defensive line tonight. One of three that they'll rotate in a tackle, and Merch lost the football. Ends up with the big fella. Hands it off to Boardingham. Oh, that could have been something special, and in this series, we expect weirdness, but borderline absurd. And Harold Perkins Jr. causing chaos. Here he comes, off the edge, havoc machine. What a play by Austin Barber <laughs> to catch that football and then hand it back to his player. Well, you got to be kidding me. Look at the big fella. Whoop, take it. it. I don't want it. And they tell you offensive linemen aren't athletes. Don't believe it. I believe it. Gregory Clayton Jr. back to receive this punt. Jeremy Crawshaw to punt it away. for a Florida hot and that'll trickle out of bounds at the 14 43 yard punt Louisiana Saturday night here in Baton Rouge we got a great one between LSU and Florida welcome back to SEC Saturday night presented by T-Mobile 5G home internet Tom Hart Cole Kubik Alyssa Lang Alyssa LSU getting banged up tonight yeah, an update on running back John Emery Jr. He's out for this game, dealing with an Achilles injury. Also, guys, Harold Perkins went into the tent before the end of that last play for just a moment, a little tweak in his back, but obviously came back out there and continued to wreak havoc. So something to keep an eye on. All right, thanks, Alyssa. Jane Daniels, 8 of 12 for 143 tonight. Caleb Jackson is his running back, and Daniels pulls it, takes it himself. He's got the sideline. Jaden Daniels off to the races and a bend back inside. He takes it to the house. 85 yards for Daniels. What a moment for Jaden Daniels. This guy's got another gear. When you're out there outrunning SEC defensive backs that had an angle on you. He left Jordan Castell in the rear view. 17-7, longest rush of the year by any player in the SEC and it comes from a quarterback we mentioned that he's dynamic safety gonna roll down on the play fake watch your backer and your defensive end also crash but that safety coming down from the SEC logo Bryce Thornton has to keep contained poor angle and I thought Jordan Castle was gonna be able to catch him and just couldn't as you mentioned Tom Malik neighbors walling off essentially two defenders allowing Jaden Daniels to get to the outside and hit the burners he is different man there's a moment in this game last year where Brian Kelly right before a snap went onto the field to holler at Jaden Daniels and I asked him in our meeting yesterday what was that moment what was that conversation he said I had to tell him just play ball stop thinking be a football player cut it loose and he can do that with the arm, and as we know, he can do it with the legs and the decision to keep and then put everybody in the dust. And I'll be honest, ball. I'll be honest with you, Tom, you can see it in his body language. He did a couple of times, the earlier run he had down on the sideline, the way he kind of jukes and then goes out of bounds, just that extra confidence, that extra, I got this. You can see it in his demeanor on the field as a football player. By the way, it's fitting, as we talk about Heisman moments, and Billy Cannon had the most iconic in LSU history, and. Halloween night against 
Ole Miss, but if you talk about moments for guys who want to take home trophies, during that commercial break, they just showed Ohio State highlights, and they showed two Marvin Harrison touchdowns, and that's a guy trying to have a big game against Michigan State, and Daniels, obviously unaware of the jumbotron, but making his own moment tonight. He has made multiple big moments here for this LSU offense tonight. Harrison, four for 72 and two scores. Mertz on the run. Incomplete, trying to find Hanson. 8.17 to go in the second quarter. Momentum behind the LSU team at 102,000 here in Death Valley. And Florida wants to stay in this thing. They're going to have to hold the ball for a little bit. Absolutely. And that's one of those decisions from Graham Merch. You'd like to see that ball out a little bit more quickly. He likes to push it. He likes to take those level concepts and go a little bit deeper. It wasn't going to be available on that play. Only a second miss tonight. Here's Montrell Johnson. Johnson is able to pick up a few. And that'll leave him with third and long. It's not an area that Florida likes to live, mainly due to the protection, Tom. But they were shotgun with a back offset more in that game last week against Arkansas than they have been all season. There's Harold Perkins, if you're wondering where Mr. Havoc is. Huge game against the Gators last year. And they'll stop play movement on the Florida offensive line. Ball start. Offense with a 75. Five-yard penalty. Third down. That's Cam Waits. Transfer from down the road at a Louisiana Lafayette with the Raging Cajuns. Guy barely played high school football. The basketball star in a tough environment for him here in Death Valley tonight. Third and 13. And another flag. That one came from the umpire. Delay of game. Defense number one. Using disconcerting signals. Five yard penalty. Third down. It's very simple for defenses. You cannot, especially at the linebacker position, even though you may be making moves, you cannot simulate the snap count either through screaming, yelling, or clapping. And that's what they got Omar Space for. I didn't see a clap. I think he was no yelling. Clap. No, it wasn't a clap, but you could see him barking, and officials thought that he was attempting to mimic the snap count. Uh, that'll help Florida out a little bit. They get five back. Mertz looking for Wilson. He goes to the slant this time. And a first down catch and run by Montrell Johnson. He moves the pile all the way to the 45-yard line. Montreal Johnson Jr. playing with a little extra motivation tonight, Alyssa. Yes, yeah, the first time his grandmother is here to see him play in person, guys. Plenty of high school teammates and coaches also here. He was recruited by LSU, but ultimately didn't get the offer. He said, they let me get out of their state. I'm happy where I am now, but they should have kept me in Louisiana. Started. The previous play is under further review for potential targeting. Oh, that'll add a wrinkle to it. He started his college career playing for Billy Napier in Louisiana. And now finally gets a chance to play here at Tiger Stadium. Well, it's not very often you see targeting when there is a scrum at the end, so it must have come early. Well, not on that one. There it is. That is Andre Sam. We assume that's the one they're looking at. What do you got? Hits him on the shoulder. Obviously, a running back is not protected in this scenario like a quarterback would be. He's not defenseless. It's not head or neck area. I, I just, for me, I don't see how. I understand why you're taking a look at it. 
Yeah, I don't know how you come away with targeting on this play. Down to the helmet on the shoulder pad of Montreal Johnson. Well, the raging Cajuns, he was the Sun Belt Conference freshman of the year in 21. Not the team in rushing touchdowns. That was quite a run that they're on under Billy Napier. Dominated their division. Well, he was able to separate with multiple quality backs in that system as well, Tom. A couple that have made their way to the NFL. I, I just think he is so smooth and has so much power. I, I believe he's one of the more underrated players in this league. And he's actually been, his production's been dipping off a little bit. His snap count has been dipping a little bit more ATN last week. And they asked Billy Napier and Rob Sale about that, and they said, really, no rhyme or reason. Just kind of felt like he had the hot hand last week against Arkansas, so he stayed in and got more touches. This is a long and continuous look. John Allman is our replay official. Steve Marlowe is the referee. And they're looking at the crown of the helmet, leading with it. After further review, personal foul, targeting number 14 defense, using the crown of the helmet. A 15 yard penalty, an automatic first down. Number 14 is disqualified. And so LSU secondary loses another player as Andre Sam transfer from Marshall will be out the remainder of this game. Brian Kelly got a good look at on the Jumbotron here. What did you think? I, I was with, I'm with Brian Kelly. I told you before. You're coming up to make a tackle. I understand you put your head down. To me, that doesn't really qualify as a launch. We, we already ruled out the contact and where it was. I understand the crown of the helmet's the first thing of, from the player that hits the ball carrier, but I don't think that that necessarily always brings intent into the picture. I can understand why Brian Kelly's frustrated. And we had a great conversation with Coach Kelly about some of the rules and how they affected his team a week ago and how, how technical some of the things can get when he gets those descriptions back when he sends plays into the league office. told that targeting was ruled because it was strictly a crown of the helmet hit with the defender Andre Sam looking straight down and leading with the crown of the helmet. Sam from Iowa, Louisiana will sit for the remainder of this one. And they are really young in the secondary. At times they'll have four true freshmen out there now. See if Merch can take advantage. He'll run it. And a little boot, and he slides forward to set up second and about three. That was Ryan Yates, freshman from Denton, Texas, filling in for Andre Sam at safety. They've already got Toviano, freshman, starting at one corner, and Ashton Stamps backing up at another corner. And that's a stumbling first down run by Montreal Johnson, Jr. Nice cut back there, most likely called a zone cut. Just inside zone play, has the understanding that thing's gonna hit backside based on the alignment of the defense, and Montreal Johnson Jr. can get north and south. I mean, Matt House, LSU defensive coordinator, Tom, was telling us in our meetings yesterday, I, I can't even play a lot of nickel and dime. I, I don't have the personnel to be able to do it. It's been a frustrating season for sure for House and this LSU defense. Now first and ten. Here's Johnson on the receiving end. And we got flags coming in at the tail end. They had a couple of guys in the secondary they expected to contribute this year that are not. They've dealt with injuries up front. Makai Wingo elected to have surgery last week. He's out for the rest of the season. That is a huge loss on the defensive line for LSU. And they have to keep it so simple that Matt House is unable to run some of the, con some of the concepts that would make LSU more competitive on the defensive side. After the play, personal foul, unnecessary roughness, number 90, defense. At the distance to the goal, automatic first down. That's Jacoby and Guillory with the personal foul attack on another 15. When this drive started, after the Jaden Daniels 85-yard run, we said, 
Florida's going to have to hold on to the ball, run some clock, and get in a position to score. They're doing just that. And I think the main thing, Tom, that we also discussed is killing that momentum yep. that LSU had. And this stadium had a lot of it. This stadium had come to life. And when this place does, it is a dangerous place to be as a Tiger opponent. Grand March 13 of 15 through the air. Here's Pearsall. Meanwhile, they go with the reverse, and the freshman Wilson looking for a block. Pickup of seven on first down for Florida. Just all the eye candy that they give you. Split zone, tight end comes across. You get the motion jet back the opposite direction. Wilson does an excellent job late, just kind of trying to get north and south towards that goal line. Another injured Tiger. Ovia Gofu, transfer from Texas. We're looking at his right leg. Boy, he had that strip sack earlier in the game as well. He's had a nice year off the edge for this LSU defense. Well, they tend to a Gofu. We step away for a timeout. Back in a moment. Dory during Watson coming up in a bit on the Regents halftime report. We will show you how Missouri hammered Tennessee in the SEC title game is set. How about what we're seeing so far? Uh, we need to have a targeting discussion. That was the most ridiculous <laughs> call ever. Yeah. Competitive <laughs> game. Florida's knocking on the door. No Peter Burns shots yet out there. Have we? I haven't seen a single one there, Tom. Uh, yeah, we, we've been told and recommended not to show Peter Burns in the state he's in with his trick. Uh, trip to Baton Rouge this weekend. Oh, there were shots, just not from the camera. Eighth play of the drive, uh, second of four. Here's ETN, and he is in. Touchdown, Florida. What a drive by the Gators. They needed an answer. They got one. It's a great cut, Tom. Duo, watch your double team. Left guard, left tackle, right here. Great push from Jake Slaughter. Great push from Richie Leonard. That movement back into the linebacker's lap allows ATN to make that cut and be able to walk into the end zone. Here's Smack. Last time LSU had the football, Jade Daniels took an 85 yard for a quick score. This season, for every field goal and extra point made by participating universities, Allstate will make a contribution to the university's general scholarship fund. Thank you, Allstate. Go back to the targeting on Andre, Andre Sam. Crown of the helmet, one of the four indicators. A rule that's in place to protect the tackler. By definition, they got it right. But I understand if you're LSU and what didn't get flagged for targeting, or at least confirmed by targeting last week against your own quarterback, and obviously Brian Kelly uh, going through a lot of those emotions here tonight as well. I can see the frustration. It's a, it, if we're doing it to protect the player, I, I understand that. But it almost feels like it needs to be a separate foul, a different foul. Because targeting, in my opinion, is designed to bring in the intent of the player to inflict harm. That's what targeting is. You're targeting that player and trying to inflict extra harm on that individual. You want to protect the player who's attempting to inflict that harm. Let's make that something totally different. Kickoff is boom through the back of the end zone. Speaking aloud, how about the play of Jane Daniels? Guys with 10,000 passing yards and 2,000 rushing yards. This is elite company. LeBeaver, Kaepernick, Griffin, Mariota, Trevon Boykin, and Jaden Daniels. Two of those took home the Heisman at the end of the season. Already a school record for rushing yards by a quarterback this season for Daniels.
by the way, he can throw it too. Wants to run it again. And a five yard gain. He's going to lift them up. Jamari Lyons with the bear hug. Only Jalen Carter was allowed to do that. 85 yard run, the longest by quarterback in LSU history. it up to Caleb Jackson. Jackson averaging over five yards of carry coming in in limited time, but more opportunities with Logan Diggs out tonight and John Emery Jr. who left the game early in the second quarter. Daniels to the slant. Good hands. And a shot. And Malik Neighbors picks up the first down with the extra effort. Malik Neighbors so strong, those yards after the catch. Good protection up front. Bringing five in a strike from Jaden Davis. Neighbors and Daniel spent some time together in Southern California this past offseason. And Neighbors was raving about the relationship they were able to build. In part because Daniels took him sightseeing. Took him to the Getty Museum. Malik was really excited about the fact that he took him to this jewelry store where the Rams Super Bowl rings were made. And by the looks of it, Malik may have spent some money there because <laughs> he was blinged out pregame. He went through all the designer stores that he went to when he was describing the sightseeing. Fendi, Louis. Places only you shop on our crew. Mm -hmm. Second down, Daniels gets rid of it quickly and incomplete. Kind of fit it to Kyron Lacey. Good design from Austin Armstrong defensively there. You show six up front, you drop two. It gives you a clean edge. Defender right in Jaden Daniels' face. I like throwing right into the pressure, but he was rushed a little bit. Had to get that ball out quickly. Alabama game took a turn for the worse when Daniels was intercepted on a deflected pass. So then shortly thereafter, he would leave the game to a heck of a start against Bama. Touchdowns at four of the first six possessions before the offense stalled and Daniels got injured. Here comes everybody on third down. Too high, trying to find neighbors. And there's a flag on the play after Daniels took a hit. That'll go against LSU. Boy, and you mentioned it, Tom. Everybody, safety, pressure coming from depth. Holding. Offense number 50. Penalties decline. Fourth down. Two linebackers walked up in your A-gap. right there in the middle of your screen. The safety pressure, you see 18 coming right down the barrel as well. There's not enough to pick that up, even after motioning the tight end in to help. And Emory Jones out there at right tackle. A little bit of a tug on his way down. Jay Bramblett waving to the sideline, maybe to introduce himself to the LSU coaching staff. He has the fewest punts in the country. Be only his 18th of the season. Florida came after it. Bramlett got rid of it quick. And great hang time. Florida take a fair catch inside the 10. That 38-yard punch. We got a three-point game with 2-11 to play in a half. And Florida getting the ball back. Scan the QR code now and download the app for your chance to win. Brought to you by Academy Sports and Outdoors. So Grant Merch, 13 of 15. And coming off of a scoring drive, Billy Napier with the last second words for him. What do you like about how Mertz has played tonight? Good decision making thus far. Only a few times that I've seen maybe the ball needed to come out a little bit more quickly or maybe needed to just go ahead and throw the football into the stands, get rid of it, get it out. But keep in mind, Tom, he does so much at the line of scrimmage. Protections, movement, shifts and motions. Having a great understanding of where to align his individual players and try to get good matchups. They put a lot on the quarterback in this offense. 
203 consecutive attempts without a pick for Mertz, second only to T-Ball, and stop that one before it starts. Delay of game, Delay of game. offense, five-yard penalty, first down. So first and 15. Lee Napier said earlier he was happy with the emotion that his team was playing with, some of the chippiness. That has certainly served them well. Both teams have been flagged three times each. Wilson motions, and they hand it off. Great tackle on the defensive line made by Greg Penn the third. Leader of this LSU defense comes backside all the way across the line of scrimmage. You'll see 30. He'll be on the left side of your screen. Comes all the way across that line of scrimmage to make that play. Good bounce by Montreal Johnson and Greg Penn not going to let it happen. Big game for Penn last week. Active linebacker in this LSU defense all year. And 10 tackles against the Tide. Second of 14. Offensive line can't hear Mertz and Richie Leonard screaming as a, at his quarterback. Play clock at three. Now they go into a shift. They're running out of time. And Mertz tried to use a timeout. Timeout, Florida, the first of the half. 30 second timeout. Well, all right, so we can see Graham Mertz and this offensive line trying to deal with the noise in this stadium. You played here as an offensive lineman. Walk me through what that O-line's thinking. You can't hear anything. First and foremost, you get to that line of scrimmage, and you're my guard, and I'm turning to you saying, red, 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 and you're not doing anything. I can't obviously move because I've got the football. And then if you did hear it, you have to give it to my tackle down there. we got to do the same thing to the right side. That's coming from the quarterback. Then he's got to give it to the running back and the tight ends and the receivers. It's too much, Tom. You have to understand going in that that's going to be an issue and understand when that crowd noise does ramp up, you have to limit what you're trying to do. So do you think Florida will be better off limiting some of the shifts and motions? It's such a staple of their offense. Absolutely. In moments like this, when you're backed up and you know the crowd's going to be energized on third and longs, when you know that noise is coming like right now, you have to have a play ready to just go. going to check. Ten on the clock. He checks, but now motion, but no shift. And try to run it out of the end zone in a little bit of room. And that's going to set up a third and 11. Jordan Jefferson worked hard to fend off blocks and take down ETN. Another thing it does, Tom, it limits your snap count and your options with your snap count. Watch Big 99 just blow this up, working on the center right there. Jordan Jefferson. He is that dude inside for the LSU defense and working on Jake Slaughter, who does not have a ton of playing time at center inside this Florida offense. They like him, feel like the future's better, and feel like he's better at maintaining some of this stuff pre-snap, but that's a tough assignment there. LSU jumped, what a gift, and Mertz will lob it down the sideline. Mason Smith got a little anxious, but to your point, Florida without Kingsley at walk-in who's been battling an ankle injury and unable to go on the road here tonight in this environment. Are there centers that are better suited to environments like this? Absolutely. Offside, defense, zero. And the neutral zone at the snap, five-yard penalty. We play third down. How much can center play differ from one guy to the next when it comes to a silent count. I think it can be massive. Some guys have better awareness of the clap and understanding what that count's going to be like. Other guys are visual. They need to see it. They want to see the leg lift. They want to turn and look at the quarterback. Other guys don't mind that at all. They let the guard tap them, whatever that is. Got to tell his tight end Boardingham as well. Pearsall sharing it via signal to the other wide receiver. On third and six, they're able to pick up four. Jefferson with the tackle. And that will likely be the last play of the half. Florida 
doesn't have to punt it away on fourth down if they don't care to. A little bit of everything here in the first half tonight. Coming up at the half, you can watch the live performance from the Golden Band from Tigerland on SEC Network Plus. Start streaming now on the ESPN app. Jaden Daniels with an 85-yard touchdown run, the highlight of the first half for LSU. Longest run for an LSU quarterback in their long history. Meanwhile, Florida has put up a good fight. They answered with a touchdown drive of their own after the Daniels touchdown run, and we've got a three-point game at the half. Get to the field with Brian Kelly. Here's Alyssa Lynn. Coach, a couple of big stops for your defense. How would you evaluate their play so far? Um, I'm proud of them. They're, they're playing hard, playing physical. Yeah, I'm proud of them. Jaden has created some explosives for your offense. What do you need to see more of in the second half? Yeah, I mean, you know, obviously the, the fourth down, you know, stop. Um, you know, we've, we've got to convert down here. we we got to be – got to get in the end zone, obviously. Um, and, and we've been a little bit uneven uh, in, in the red zone, you know, obviously turning, you know, potential scoring opportunities for seven into three. So we got to do a better job there. Thanks, Coach. Yeah. Fun one here tonight in a pivotal game for both LSU and Florida. Let's get you the studio now, now along with Benjamin and Chris. Here's Dari. Welcome back to SEC Saturday Night, presented by T-Mobile 5G Home Internet. 70th meeting all time between LSU and Florida. It is dead even, and these quarterbacks in a battle tonight. Grant Burks has been sensational for Florida. Jake Daniels showing off all of his weapons tonight for LSU. Welcome back, Tom Hart alongside Cole Kublik. Jane Daniels had a moment in the first half with an 85-yard touchdown run. His legs have been the difference in his half. He's been phenomenal knowing when to leave the pocket. You saw Mike Denbrock moving the pocket a little bit earlier in this game, but third and fourth down, Florida defense has been great. This has been a chippy game. It really started pregame for two programs that know each other as well as anybody. They've met every year since 1971, and before the pads were on, the words started flying, and that continued in-game. I thought the conversation that Alyssa Lang had with Billy Napier was fantastic. He said, we welcome the physicality. We need to answer it. We don't want penalties. We don't want to be undisciplined. Well, this is just two hard-nosed football teams going mano y mano. No return for Ito. Oh, he is going to bring it out. ETN trying to find the edge, and he's taken down at the seven. There is a flag all the way back at the 40-yard line. Somebody was across the line at the kick, but as it stands, Florida's going to have a long field. Offside, kicking team number 97. Five yards penalty and re-kick. So let's take a mulligan after that one. <laughs> and I'm sure ETN is getting some coaching. You can see him over there on the sideline at the last second. And that coaching is, hey, let's make a better decision here, huh? I understand. You come out of half. You're in this game. You're down three. You want to make a play. But Billy Napier... Pulling AT into the side, saying right there, let's uh, let's rethink that one next time. A couple yards deep in the end zone. Well, we talked about the chippiness and the emotions, and for ETN, who's from up in Jennings, Louisiana, he certainly is fired up to play in this one. He and Cam Jackson had 60, 80 tickets they had to come up with for this game. That ain't easy. Not in this place. LSU was late getting a man out there on the kickoff team, so they will reset. I only got four. I had to tell either my mom or my dad they weren't coming. <laughs> How do you make that choice? Guess it depends on who you're playing, huh? <laughs> depends on how far the trip was and who wanted to make it. Let's see if ETN has a chance here. A short kick from the three. 
little shake, and he dives for it out to the 24. But did Billy Napier have to say, Alyssa? Well, now that the Gators are heading back out on offense, I asked him what would look different in the second half. He said we have to adjust to some of the different front presentations that they're giving us. Another thing that has to happen, get the run game going a little bit more consistently. He referenced some penalties that were costly in the first half, but overall pretty happy with the defensive performance. Outside of that big explosive from Jaden Daniels for the touchdown, which he said, hey, we had a freshman safety out there. We're still very much in this game. And his safety took a bad route, a bad read on the zone read. Montreal Johnson Jr. And De La Salle in New Orleans gets a chance. And he gets wrapped up by Mason Smith. That explosive from Jaden Daniels was answered on an eight-play, 75-yard drive by Florida. Cut the lead back down to three. Mertz hands it off. And we were talking earlier about the frustration from Florida fans that the passing game, 13 completions for 136 yards, it's not necessarily a vertical attack doesn't stretch the defense a lot. I, I, I understand it's part of the game, but I'd also love to see number one involved a little bit more if I were Florida. He's well, your best player offensively, and you have the capabilities to move him. You've put Ricky Pearsall all over the field over the course of this season. I would agree with you, Tom. Pearsall's been targeted five times tonight. He's got four catches for 50 yards. Burks looking the other way. A little swing pass is knocked down. Paris Shan. The basketball star growing up in Toronto showed off his vert that time. It's a nice job by Sham because he comes around on a twist, the tackle in twist. So he was lined up inside. He's coming outside to have contain, but good job playing football with his eyes, understanding that ball's about to get out. Getting those big hands up, knocking that football down. Felt like the back had space as well if he completes that pass. Didn't play a lot of football growing up in Toronto. Was on the Canadian under-16 national team with former All-SEC player Charles Bediaco of Alabama, among others. Clayton with a fair catch backpedaling. It is the hottest show in college football. It is led by Cole Kublick. It is called Read and React. The dangers of what Jaden Daniels presents as a runner. You'll get all of the flow from the linebackers and the defensive end. Safety, as we mentioned during the broadcast, off the SEC logo takes a bad angle. But, Tom, sometimes blocking shows up that people don't pay attention to. Or maybe where you least expect it. Kyron Lacey, towards the bottom of your screen, he gets a safety down to the ground. Potentially could have had an angle to make that run. Malik Neighbors walling off multiple defenders as well. We might be inviting receivers to the block party Monday night. So on first down, not much happening for Josh Williams. It was the second straight week that Jane Daniels rushed for over 100 yards in a half. But for 137 against Alabama. He already has a single game LSU quarterback rushing record, besting Alvin Darks 142 yards against Ole Miss back in 1942. Pressure from the edge. They pick it up. Daniels escapes. And now he's going to win another sprint. Jaden Daniels takes a pass of 45. That's a run of 28. Ooh, pressure comes off the edge from the slot and picked up fairly well by Josh Williams. You see him get the defender to the ground. And this is where Jaden Daniels excels, Tom. He has that vision to understand where things are opening up in front of him, the speed to pull away from defenders. You have to have rush lane integrity. You have to have a rush plan when you play against this quarterback. It was better than 18 yards a carry on nine rushes by Jaden Daniels. Daniels keeps it. Got rid of one and took a hit on the sideline. There is no flag. Jaden Hill met up with Jaden Daniels. Looked like he had. A step on the apron and Brian Kelly fight for his guy. Not really a vicious hit. I think the thing that you don't like about it there, though, is the quarterback's blatantly giving himself up. So you don't want any contact there if you're Brian Kelly. So I can understand the frustration. Kelly thought he was in the white. Second and seven. 
Remember LSU down two running backs. They were without Logan Diggs coming into the game. John Emery Jr. injured earlier. And this is a wide open Josh Williams. Williams takes it back to the numbers. And he's down to the five yard line. 45 yard catch and run for Josh Williams. Williams had a huge run in this game last year, 51 yarder to open the second half. That gave LSU great momentum. And now he's got him knocking on the door. Play clock already at four. Daniels to throw, looking for Taylor in the corner. And incomplete. Covered by Castell. Tyreek Sapp got him. And a big hit from Tyreek Sapp, who just had a nice move inside. Delivered a good pass rush. So it sets up second and goal. Kind of goes. Excuse me, goes back to some of that play call we talked about near the goal line previously, Tom, of not just running the football in between the tackles, taking some shots to the perimeter now. Caleb Jackson in a tailback. He is physical. Jackson gets a chance. Nobody touched him. A five yard touchdown run. Yard drive from LSU. And the Tigers a point after away from a double digit lead. Here's Damian Ramos. And he puts it through. Talking with Mike Denbrock about Josh Williams. He said every time we put him in, he's ready. And he was ready on this one from Jaden Daniels. Turns into man coverage. You see Scooby Williams right in the middle. He's got to be manned up on the back. He gets lost inside at the line of scrimmage. And then Josh Williams wide open to be able to take it inside the 10. And that touchdown, just a misfit on the run. LSU in for six. Caleb Jackson with the touchdown run for LSU. And the Tigers have more than doubled up Florida in the yardage department. The SEC today has been a league full of blowouts, and Florida's got to be careful that this one doesn't get away from them early in the third quarter. Down double digits. Graham Mertz, 13 of 16 for 136 yards. He's been sacked twice. That brings his total to 28 sacks on the season. Fifth most in the conference. My nice. offensive line that's 108th in the country in sacks allowed. Now you've had to start multiple combinations. One of the big reasons why. Uh, play action. Mertz hit as he throws. Downfield to Pearsall. And he climbed the ladder for the first down. Mason Smith absolutely lit up Mertz. Uh, you asked for it. Mason Smith right here inside. That's winning a one-on-one. -on -one. Nice swim move late. Gets the hit on Mertz. Goodness. Pearsall goes up and makes the catch. You said it, Tom, before halftime. Get Ricky Pearsall involved. Pearsall is superb athlete. Was a Wildcat quarterback some in high school as ETN picks it up for a few. Everything that Florida does, and they're not the only ones, but specifically one play to set up the next. Everything packaged. So then how can you find and Harold Perkins is the injured player now for LSU. This is not a good sign for the Tigers. Their sack leader for the second consecutive season. 
And they're looking at Perkins lower left leg back in a moment. From hurricane fueled feuds in Tebow's OG jump pass. Oh to LSU's lone loss in their 03 Natty run in the Mad Hatter State Field. To the fog shrouded LSU. There are historic rivalries, there are weird rivalries. And then there is Florida LSU, the historically weird rivalry. Ryan McGee encapsulated it perfectly. Historically weird 70th all time meeting. LSU has won five of the last six. By the way, this serious history involves stolen signals, too. That seems to be a hot topic in college football. Back in 1960, there is a run for a first down by Trevor Etienne down to the 21 yard line. We went to break with Harold Perkins injured on the field. He's been helped off and is trying to get stretched out on the LSU sideline. And he is anxious to get back in this game. Good to see. Yep. Sack and a forced fumble tonight. Birds hands it off. How did ETN fit through that hole into the end zone? Touchdown, Florida from 21 yards out. Second of the night for ETN. Second consecutive gap theme run. Watch the pullers come. You're going to get a seal and a kick out. There's your seal. There's your kick. And ETN knows how to get north and south right in between the two, and you get him third level one on one with a safety. Chances are he's making a miss. Mm. Fantastic block by the freshman wide receiver Eugene Wilson, the third, to take care of the final defender. What an answer by the Gators. Trey Smack. We got a three point game. Tom Melissa mentioned when she talked to Billy Napier at half some of those adjustments, two consecutive power plays or gap scheme runs, blocking down and then pulling around. Didn't see a lot of those in the first half. It was mostly zone in the run scheme in the first half. So something that Billy Napier, Rob Sale saw at halftime, decided to go to that a little bit here early in the second half, and it's paying off. How excited is ETN? Three touchdowns in the last five quarters for him. Had a career high 172. In the big win against what was then 11th ranked Tennessee back in the early ages of this season. That was most for a Florida running back over the last nine seasons. Also, Tom, that's the second second drive by Florida when they've gone down a couple of scores. We put in a bad spot. They've been able to respond and drive the length of the field to score. Right at Graham Mertz, a Wisconsin transfer, chance for a return. But one bobbled and lost, and Florida's got it. The freshman Caleb Jackson was rushing up the field to kick and never got it clean. And unless something happens to the bottom of the pile, it was right into the Gators' hands. Looked like Javion Tomes, and they're still fighting for it. No signal yet. It didn't look like he took his eyes down a little bit early. Bounces off, and there's Tombs 37. Just bounces right back in front of his face mask, and he's able to gobble it up. Look like Dijon Johnson 
Was the one who was able to find it. Covered by Florida, first down. And that's the happiest game of hungry, hungry hippo you'll ever play. They say officially it was Dijon Johnson who ends up with it in a short field for Graham Mertz, Billy Napier, and the Florida Gators. If you've ever believed in that shot play mentality of when you wanted to take one, this would be that spot. You got Pearsall at the top of the formation. Now he comes in motion. They're going to run it with Montreal Johnson. And he's able to rip off eight yards on first down. The news for LSU, despite the turnover, Harold Perkins Jr. is back on the field for the Tigers. Nice shot backside of the fourth offensive line, left tackle 58, Austin Barber just buried an LSU defender. They're getting into the shifts a whole lot earlier, it seems, here in the second half. Fake the end around. It's Johnson to pick up the first down. Tom, that plays a perfect example of what you were beginning to ask a drive ago where everything is married together. That orbit motion that comes around, that'll present to you how the safeties and linebackers are playing. If they stay in backside, all right, cool. We're gonna keep we're gonna keep running front side, keep handing that football off like you did there. If they're not respecting it, that's when you can hand it, potentially go play action off of it. Already Florida flexing its rushing muscles in the second half. It's Johnson again straight ahead. And they'll have second and about three at the five. This one where Mason Smith maybe gets a little bit too aggressive. He swims backside, so away from where that run is targeted. And it kind of takes him out of his gap just a little bit. Johnson, Louisiana kid, another crack at it. He's got the first down. Leonard and Perkins chatting after that play. There's a lot of frustration on the LSU side of the football. Florida going tempo here, first and goal. Mertz under center. Takes it himself. He's in. Touchdown, Florida. And the Gators take the lead. LSU was busy in conversation and communication with Mertz. Hustled Florida to the line and called his own number. I like the element of surprise there because that's about a good yard and a half off the goal line, Tom. I don't know if the defense would have anticipated the quarterback sneak just then. Mertz able to find a little bit of space in between the center and right guard. Watch Mason Smith jump it a little bit. Zero there. You see he goes kind of outside with that swim move. That opened up the space for Mertz to be able to squeak in. Smack for the point after. Gators have their first lead of the night. 7-16 to go in the third quarter to the studio. Here's Dari. All right, guys, time for our Yellowwood five-star play. How about Brock Bowers playing, starting three Front catches down. and a Back. touchdown from Carson Beck. It is a rout right now in Athens. 45-14 over ninth-ranked Ole Miss, guys. Tight dart, thanks. So maybe we'll be the only one that didn't get a route. Scores today, Alabama won by 28, South Carolina by 41, Missouri by 29, and Auburn put 48 on the board. They took down Arkansas. That was a 38-point win. Some frustration with Harold Perkins getting it from Brian Kelly, and I, I think that frustration with Kelly is that Perkins wasn't ready for that play because he was tied up with the offensive lineman at the end of the prior play. Right. And I would imagine Brian Kelly just trying to Calm his folks down. Keep your troops' emotions under control. Momentum on the other sideline now. LSU still has designs on a 10-win season. Maybe a Heisman campaign for Jake Daniels, Florida. 
is in a fist fight just to make it to bowl eligibility. Jackson again. And he lets that one go over his head after fumbling the last. So here's Jaden Daniels and his team trailing past the midway point of the third quarter. He has run for 169. He has thrown for 202. There has only been one other SEC quarterback in history that has thrown and run for over 200 yards in the same game. That was Johnny Menzel in a Cotton Bowl against Oklahoma in 2013. Gets rid of it on time. And Chris Hilton Jr. is able to pick up the first down, the sophomore out of Zachary, Louisiana. It's one of the things you have to focus on this LSU receiving core. They're so dangerous after they catch the football. The yak yards, the run and catch is just lethal. Here's pressure from the edge again. Daniels going deep down the sideline and incomplete. Trying to find Hilton again. Coverage by Jalen Kimber. You got a face full of sod on that one. Jalen Kimber, man to man. Austin Armstrong told me last night, we want to get hands on these receivers. We want to reroute these receivers, redirect these receivers, and Jalen Kimber playing press there, but not all the way up to the line of scrimmage looking for that early jam. Hilton's got to replace his divot, second and ten. Austin Armstrong. Defensive coordinator. On second down, Daniels pulls it back, fires again. That's the first down to Malik Neighbors. Gain of 13. To your point about the yards after catch, Brian Kelly told us after watching the tape last year, we had too many catches with our back to the goal line. We got to get our guys going downfield. It was such a cool description, and it's so ordinarily said. You don't think about it that way, but. Florida drops into a zone. Daniels trying to run it. Got some space. What a move! Jaden Daniels again! Jaden Daniels touchdown LSU! 51 yards! Took another bite out of the Gator defense and might be taking a bite out of the Big Apple. Only the second in SEC history to go for 200 and 200 in the same game. Johnny Footballs came in a bowl game. That makes Jane Daniels the first to accomplish those numerical feats in an SEC game. You've got to be kidding me with this young man making linebackers miss, running away from DBs, forcing bad angles. Jaden Daniels has been electric tonight in Tiger Stadium. On Halloween night, Billy Cannon had his moment against Ole Miss and won the Heisman in 59. Joe Burrow seemed to have a Heisman moment every week in 2019, leading LSU to a national championship. And in a rivalry for the ages, Jaden Daniels is having himself a night tonight. Another long touchdown run. Let's get down to the field and listen. And by his demeanor on the sidelines, you could not tell that we're entering shootout territory here. If we're not there already in Baton Rouge, he wa walked over to the phone, talked to his coordinator upstairs, then immediately went over to his wide receivers, specifically Malik Neighbors, and started talking through routes. Malik telling him what he's seeing, of course, thanking some of his receivers for some of the blocks that they've laid out for him tonight on some of those big runs. He's cool, calm, and collected. You can tell his offense feels that way, too, because of it. What a night for Jaden Daniels. From Baton Rouge to New York City, 1,362 miles. I want to make that reservation now. Graham Mertz of Florida trying to answer as they have multiple times tonight. Mertz flushed, fires. And Trevor Etienne with a stiff arm and got shot from behind by Omar Spates, but is able to pick up five on first down. 
how has Florida been able to answer all of these big LSU swings? Staying within their scheme, staying within their system, not getting too anxious, not getting overly aggressive, not pressing on offense. We haven't seen Grant Mertz just start to chuck the football down the field because they've been trailing. I think that's how you answer. Stay within who you are. He's got Pearsall at the top of the formation, and that's Wilson in motion. They try to run it with Etienne and gets taken down for no gain. Alyssa. You guys are talking about Graham Mertz and how calm he stays under pressure. Talking to Montreal Johnson this week, we were kind of laughing about how calm of a play caller Billy Napier is and how calm of a quarterback Graham Mertz is. How that kind of marries together and keeps the rest of the offense calm and confident. Being able to lean on leaders like Ricky Pearsall and some of those older guys as well has helped keep this Florida offense chugging tonight. Third and five, and we got an injury situation. Jacoby Guillory was so tired that he went down after his celebration and tried to sprint off the field, and he tumbled like he was Olivia Dunn over the sideline. And now the training staff looking at him after the tumble. It almost felt like, as Alyssa was doing her report, we were watching him sprint off like he got out over his skis a little bit and just lost his balance. Well, speaking of skis, Deshaun Womack to the Olivia Dunn would have been Paul Skeens by helping pull him off the field there. A nice assist. Skeens in the building tonight. There's Guillory feeling it. Yeah, there's the stop. And then, whew, I got to go. Uh oh. Hmm. And then, watch this. Uh oh. Oh, no. Oh. That wind hits you hard, Tom. Sometimes you, I mean, you get going, you just you, you exert the energy, you're tired, you gotta catch your breath. I've been there. That is a lot. That was you after dinner last night after all those oysters, huh? Listen, you, you give me the fills and give me those boudin balls. That's exactly what I turn into. I gotta roll home after all those. It leaves Florida with a third and five. Gators to a seven on third down tonight. Linebacker blitz. Mertz in as he throws again. Oh, the money! Jackson hauls it in. First catch of the game for Khalil Jackson. It is a doozy. What a grab. And Omar Spates had to hit. Look at this. Ooh, double a gap blitz both inside linebackers twist in between the center and two guards Graham Mertz hung in the pocket knew he was going to take that hit and delivered a beautiful ball well that is not the first time the ruling on the field has completed a catch for a first down the previous play is under further review not the first time tonight that Graham Mertz has been taking a shot after completion reminiscent of the end of the South Carolina game when they scored late to basically walk off the Gamecocks. But let's see first if this was a catch. He secured it at the very end. The question for Jackson will be did he have it secured when it made contact with the ground? I think that first look is our best one. Heck of an effort. It appeared as though that left arm underneath the football gets it tucked. This will be the look. It can right. touch the ground if it's still secured. I'm not sure. That movement it was there. Yeah, that movement there towards the end. How about this hit from Spates? Hmm. Maybe the most impressive part of this play is where Khalil Jackson was in his route when Graham Mertz had to let go of that football. He knew that pressure was coming. He knew it wasn't going to be picked up. And he had to let that ball go very early and put it right on the money. Billy Napier said Graham Mertz is so appreciative of the process that we have in place for our quarterbacks especially in the offseason to get a feel for what we want him to do 
and he's a different quarterback than he was at Wisconsin. He's brimming with confidence. I think Brian Kelly could probably speak to that. A couple of years ago, his Notre Dame team beat Wisconsin and intercepted Mertz four times. After further review, the pass is incomplete. It'll be fourth down at the 30 yard line. So that'll take the first down away and bring up fourth for Florida. Heck of an effort by Jackson. Feels as though it's secured here. But that late ball movement comes right there, down to the ground. And as you mentioned, Tom, having ball secure when touch ground is what's going to have to take place. Officials did not believe that happened. So here's Jeremy Crawshaw to punt it away. Aussie style punter, but he does it all straight on this year. Talking to him before the game, he said, I'm better with the spiral now. And by the way, it looks better to those NFL scouts that are recruiting. And that's another good one from Crawshaw. Fair catch taken at the 29 yard line. 41 yard punt and here comes Jaden Daniels and we talk about postseason awards it's not just Daniels with his eye on the Heisman it's also neighbors looking for the Belitnikoff and Alyssa some offseason motivation for both they credit the chemistry to building that relationship and part of that is knowing each other's individual goals the staff here at LSU helped them put pictures together with Jaden with the Heisman and with Malik with the Belitnikoff two individual awards they have this year they put them up in the weight room while they lift in the preseason they put them in their locker room so they follow them around all the time and continue to push each other to reach for those goals this season. LSU with a three point lead Daniels hands it off this time and a physical run by Noah Kane. Normally their third down back by the way Jane Daniels rushing total tonight of 220 yards on 11 carries is the second most rushing yards by a player in the SEC this year. Remember Ray Davis torched Florida for 280. The Kentucky running back leading the SEC in rushing. Second and two. Daniels going deep. Looking for touch. He's got Thomas. Down to the 10. First down on a 53 yard strike to Brian Thomas Jr. You're going to have to play man to man coverage in Austin Armstrong's defense. Great protection up front for Jaden Daniels. He likes his chances on his wide receivers or against any corner one on one Thomas a nice little inside move to get free north and south and another dime from Jaden Daniels 200 yard rusher 100 yard receiver LSU the only program in the country top 10 in receiving and rushing to the end zone and incomplete off of Thomas's hands Marshall with the coverage there. It was wild yesterday, Tom. We were talking to Mike Dinbrock, the LSU offensive coordinator, about Brian Thomas and just asked him, do we know how good he really is? And he kind of chuckled and said, no, I don't think we do. Malik neighbors get so much attention, and then there are other targets, not to mention Daniels with his legs, how they can break you down. There's just so many weapons on this offense. Thomas has had an amazing year, and we might not even be close to seeing his ceiling. Thomas leading the country and receiving touchdowns. Daniels gives it up and Kane again picks up four. By the way, Jaden Daniels has accounted for 498 total yards tonight. Feels came, optimal. Yeah, came in leading the country in total offense per game, averaging 414. And that number's going up. Third and goal. LSU looking for another two score lead. Daniels looking in zone for Thomas. He was covered. Now to the backfield. He gets it to Kane and he's in. Touchdown LSU.
first catch of the season for Noah Kane results in a touchdown. Kept a 70 yard drive and Heisman pose from Jaden Daniels. To stretch the lead to 10 again. Two eighteen to go in the third quarter. Florida has answered every LSU barrage with a score of their own. See if they can do it again. Let's take a look at tonight's high speed play brought to you by T-Mobile 5G home internet. Speaking of barrage. How about Jaden Daniels on the ground tonight 11 for 220. He has made defenders miss. He has pulled away. He has won in the open field. He's made great decisions with his legs as well. Final drive before this last touchdown. Brian Thomas Jr. winning the one on one. Perfect throw from Daniels. And another quick toss for a touchdown with Noah Kane, usually the protector back for this LSU offense. And Florida's defense multiple times has allowed a back out of the backfield to be wide open for a reception in this game tonight. 504 yards of total offense tonight for Jaden Daniels. They're top 10 in the country in seven different offensive categories coming into the game. And on 50 plays, LSU has picked up 568 yards. Daniels has thrown for 284. He's run for 220. LSU averaging 11.4 yards per play. And with all due respect, this isn't Southern or Army or some other non-conference opponent. This is the Florida Gators. And the defense that has come out and played aggressive, thrown multiple looks. A lot of different pressure packages and Jaden Daniels tonight he and the rest of that offense even after a couple of stumbles early in this game not a lot of success on third and fourth down early boy have they ramped it up in the second half Mertz with a pump fake left comes back right and incomplete they had Montreal Johnson blanketed you see number four barreling down on you, you probably get rid of it a little bit more quickly than you normally would. Harold Perkins off the edge applying that pressure and this is one of those danger moments for the Florida offense. We referenced earlier Tom how they had answered multiple times. This feels like one in which the Gators desperately need an answer to where LSU is in this game. On second and ten, Mertz finds a hole in the zone. That's good for a first down to Marcus Burke. Mertz always has an answer, it seems. A little switch concept up stop. The receiver takes the safety over to the was in motion. Soft zone coverage. Graham Mertz going to eat that alive every time with that protection. Mertz hands it off. Montreal Johnson Jr. gets bottled up. Talking with Billy Napier about Mertz. He said, listen, he's so good at processing, whether it's five man, six man protection, check to seven man pro. He's got this confidence, not just from his experience, but also from the success that he's had so far this season. Well, you, you talked about it a little bit earlier, Tom, what he has at his disposal as well. Billy talking about that, that walkthrough room that they have. It's just a giant screen where he can go in and have digital life size defenses in front of him to be able to walk through and point out linebackers and DBs. Hands it off on second and eight. Now Mertz is making history. There's chatter coming from Guillory. The tumbler. He's going to be escorted away from the pile. Well, Graham Mertz making history in the Florida record book. You can get past uh, 15 by the name of Tim Tebow. You're doing something right. We got Austin Barber trying to catch his breath. He's injured right now. And it looks like. Greg Penn is down for LSU. Barber kind of got rolled up on there. He was engaged with the defender and had somebody kind of come in, fall down from behind on his lower body. Let's see what Napier's got on the call sheet now, looking at a third and six. And a Florida program trying to salvage its season, including tonight, three games remaining. 
try and attain bowl eligibility. That includes a trip next Saturday to Columbia where Eli Drinkwitz team absolutely ran rough shot over Tennessee in the second half today. And they close with as of now undefeated with Florida State. Don't like that matchup against Missouri zone scheme against an attacking front the Missouri defensive line been great all year front seven really. And then with what Cody Schrader did on offense today. A Florida defense that is young a little bit light. They brought Jefferson on late. Where's Perkins? There's number four. On the Tiger logo, top of the formation defensively. Got to get him to jump, didn't work. Birch has been sacked twice tonight. He hands it off on third and six. And we got a flag. Before the snap, false start, 75 offense, five yard penalty, third down. That's Cam Waits, who is filling in for the injured Austin Barber at left tackle, and that's his second false start. This Florida staff first laid eyes on Waits at an LSU camp. Now he's over on the right side. Third down, 11 to go. Waits will be matched up with Perkins up top. And we got another flag. Or at least a whistle. They're going to take Greg Penn off the field. That came from the official in the back of the formation. Well, the problem was Penn got hurt on the previous play, but because of the flag, he hadn't yet come off the field. So if LSU wanted to keep him on, they'd have to burn a timeout. He's got to come off for at least one. They're going to get rowdy here on third and long. Perkins fired up the crowd. Don't let this place come to life. Four-man rush. Mertz off his back foot. He finds Johnson. Little stiff arm, and Johnson fights his way for a Florida first down. They took him all the way across the sideline, another 10 yards towards the equipment. And it's fitting that the third quarter is going to end like this in this fierce rivalry. 15 minutes of game action before it is decided. And the skirmishes have continued. Gators not going down without swinging. It is wild in here tonight in Death Valley. We've had one ejection due to targeting. We've had plenty of smack talk and a lot of extracurriculars. And it is exactly what you would expect between these two programs who first met in 1937 and have met every season since 1971. The fourth quarter starts with Florida in LSU territory. And Graham Mertz having completed 17 of 22 passes. Gators down 10. Straight ahead, Montreal Johnson to the outside and a stiff arm to give him nine on first down. Let's not forget about that effort on third down to be able to put them in that first down situation there. An excellent cut to the outside, inside zone. You see the split motion coming across, jet motion from Ricky Pearsall. Johnson just a nice bounce outside, able to pick up yard, put you in a nice 
second and one potential shot play situation right here if you're Billy Napier. Burke in motion. Mertz to throw. Tried to dump it. Now has to escape. And he's only able to find a loss of three. And that'll bring up third down after the Savion Jones sack. Graham Mertz wanted it, Tom. And Ricky Pearsall at the bottom, one on one. It was single safety. The safety's the bottom left of your screen. He actually went to Ricky Pearsall after the snap. Mertz couldn't get what he wanted, ran out of time. Third down, Florida. Converted a third down moments ago. Here's Johnson, and he's got another. What a story Montreal Johnson Jr. is. He was asked this week about growing up in New Orleans. He said the previous coaches that were here, they'd come visit me at school and be like, hey, you're the best back in the state. But he never got an offer. He said it didn't make sense. I took that kind of personal. There's a lot of motivation. I just want to show those coaches and that atmosphere what I can do and what they missed out on. This guy grew up an LSU fan. Love watching Jamar Chase, Joe Burrow, that national championship team. Now he's trying to put Florida on his back and lead him to a fourth quarter comeback. Fake the orbit. They go with Johnson again. And Montrell Johnson Jr. picks up four. For that patience, that vision on full display as it has been. For a lot of this football game, Montreal Johnson, just the ability to get lateral, find extra space, north and south physicality. It's a total package, if you ask me. To Ed Amantra running back, replace him with another from the state, Trevor Etienne. Here's ETN with a huge hole, and he's got a Florida first down. Gap scheme run again. Watch 58. Austin Barber, excuse me, tight end's going to wrap around. Get north and south, climb, get a good block on Greg Penn. That frees it up for ETN. Billy Napier, Rob Sale doing a nice job mixing up the run schemes here in the second half, not just sticking strictly zone. They'll get some pin and pulls, some gap schemes, insert some tight ends. It's the 11th play of this drive for the Gators. Mertz quickly out to Pearsall. Uh, stiff arm will get him a few more before he's taken down after a gain of seven. It's almost like you said earlier in the show, Tom. It, you just got to give him the ball. Yeah. He's a playmaker. This is just a pre-snap check from Graham Mertz. Something he's been so good at all year of just seeing things quickly. And he just spits the ball out there to his playmate. Ricky Pierce all been dynamic all year. Mertz hands it off. First down run and then some by ETN. And I think this is where Trevor Etienne has really begun to excel. How he operates between the tackles. Is he great in space? Absolutely. Big speed, of course. But he's become a very nice runner in condensed space. It's another chance. Etienne into the end zone. Touchdown, Gators. Left guard Richie Leonard Jr. Tom watch the combo and then just gets up barely enough on Greg Penn Jr. 30 for LSU right there. Just get down on the ground, get something. And that prevents him from sliding over and potentially getting in on that tackle. 18, as we mentioned. Yeah, he can get outside, but he can get north and south as well. Here's Smack for the point after.
Florida has answered time and again. They've answered on the ground. They've answered in the end zone, and they've answered with their emotions. Lil Gator Chomp from ETN. SEC Saturday Night is presented by T-Mobile 5G Home Internet, connecting homes across the SEC. What a night for Jaden Daniels, but LSU getting all it can handle from Florida. Daniels has had his moments tonight, but the Gators and Graham Mertz have had theirs. And we got a three-point game here early fourth quarter. Georgia took care of Ole Miss tonight in convincing fashion. We welcome those of you who watch the Bulldogs finish them off a final of 52 to 17. Carson Beck threw for 306. Three point game here. Jaden Daniels coming back out moments ago. Alyssa with Brian Kelly. Coach, still a quarter left, but what can you say about your quarterback so far? Now he's pretty good. I mean, for everybody that, you know, wants to say they've got the best guy, I mean, he makes plays every, every time he touches the football. But, you know, it's a battle. You know, there's a lot of emotion in the game. You know, uh, we just got to keep battling. You know, we got a full quarter here. There's a lot of football left. Thanks, Coach. Yep. We'll see what Jaden Daniels has up his sleeve. And Noah Kane with him in the backfield. Running back court depleted for LSU. They were down Diggs coming into the game, and then they lost Embry in the game. Jaden Daniels has more than made up for that. 284 yards through the air, 220, and a couple of touchdowns on the ground. He's lived up to every bit of that Heisman billing tonight. Just been dynamic. They bring a blitz. Daniels to throw. Wide open, and it's Malik Neighbors. The nation's leading receiver stays on his feet. Down to the 30, all the way down to the 20. What a run by Neighbors, and they may tack on more with the flag at the end of what is now a 51-yard game. Yeah, flex on him, Malik. What a play. If this stands, Daniel's making Holy history. Offense. Holding offense number 11. It's a 10 yard penalty from the spot of the foul. It's first down. They got Brian Thomas Jr. And he did it about 40 yards from the line of scrimmage. Ellis, you're going with tempo here. Ten yard penalty Daniels is now thrown for 328 that was a 43 yard gain and they took 10 yards off due to the penalty blitz again Daniels stands tall going deep and zone touchdown Brian Thomas Jr. Second passing touchdown of the night for Jaden Daniels. That goes with two rushing touchdowns. And LSU has put 653 yards of offense on the board tonight. That is 12.3 yards per play for LSU. I think Brian Thomas had a plan. He just vultured his way to that touchdown <laughs> by getting the flag on the holding and saying, hey, I can make up for it. First got caught with his hands in the cookie jar on the hold on Jalen Kimber. That took 10 yards off of the gain. And then he ran right past Kimber. Daniels told us earlier this season, my guys are open. They yell Waffle House. It's always open. Ain't no Waffle Houses in Manhattan. Maybe soon. Jaden Daniels is making history tonight. 
First player ever with 350 passing yards and 200 plus rushing yards in a single game. That's FBS history, folks. That's not the last 20 years or just one conference or for LSU. That's Eva. Eva, Eva? Forever. Meanwhile, Etienne has made some history for Florida. His three rushing touchdowns tied for the most by a Florida player in a game against a top 25 opponent in the last 25 seasons. There's your chop. Offside, kicking team number 44. Five yard penalty will be added to the 25 yard line. First down. Meanwhile, Daniels is dead even with KJ Costello for the SEC record for total yards in a game. Remember Costello playing in Mike Leach's offense early on? Had 585 yards of total offense against LSU right here in this building. Daniels at 585 right now. I feel like he'll get past him. <laughs> He's got a shot. Every time the Gators have been knocked to the ground, they've picked themselves back up. See if they can get off the mat again. Mertz on play action. He is chased. And he still finds Pierce Saul is shaking his head on Perkins. So fitting that we heard the gong from The Undertaker's music going right before that snap. This team has just shoved that coffin door open over and over and over tonight. Mertz knew he had to get rid of that football. Some pressure coming on the bootleg. A little bit underthrown, but a nice adjustment from Ricky Pearsall. In a series that never disappoints. This one living up to the reputation again. Trevor Etienne. Boy, he just put a move on Harold Perkins right there at the line of scrimmage. Took him for a little bit of a ride. Are you running, uh, wondering about the FBS record for total offense? I'm going to guess that it was a quarterback from Texas Tech. <laughs> it's a pretty good guess. Guy by the name of Mahomes, who was at the Kansas game today. Through for 819. Or pardon me, accounted for 819 yards of total offense against Oklahoma in 16. Hold on a second. 819. You hear what you just said? Yeah. I mean, the fact that he was at the Kansas game? Yeah. Is that, that what impressed that was, you? That was definitely it. 819. How many of those were rushing? <laughs> Over under 20. Yeah, I'll take the under. <laughs> so uh Another key third down for Florida. They've been magnificent on third down tonight. They're going to try to run it here. They got nowhere to go. ETN bottled up by Jacoby and Guillory. It's a 10 point deficit midway through the fourth quarter. ESPN analytics says fourth and 12 or less is a your call it. Three is way less than 12. They're going to keep the offense on the field. I feel like you knew you were going to go for it, Tom, just by the play call there. You're running it between the tackles. I feel like Billy Napier probably had his next call already made. Seven of 16 on fourth down this season. Mertz facing pressure to the slant. Caught. No, and they're incomplete. Fell out of Wilson's hands as he was going down. Coverage on the back end by Sage Ryan. Boy, had the space to complete the pass. Merch may be a smidge behind on this route. The freshman had it for a moment. It was poked out by Ryan. What a stop by LSU. Sage Ryan out of Lafayette, Louisiana with a monster play moments ago. 
He's relatively new to the cornerback position. He'd been playing nickel for the first half of the year for LSU, but back end has been besieged by injuries. And LSU, the 10 point lead. And how about this fourth down play by Sage Ryan to knock the ball away? Trailing the receiver. Ball, as you mentioned, Tom, is caught. Watch the right arm come in late right there. And that's on the nose, on the button. Look at that. Oh, that is a heck of a play. That is like Deontay Wilder on the chin going down to the mat. Bronze Bomber. Second and six now for Jaden Daniels having a historic night. Here's Daniels on the run again. Daniels took a shot at the end after another first down carry. Miguel Mitchell with the stop. Turned into a little bit of a lead with Josh Williams out in front. The splitter takes the defensive end out. The motion man takes the defensive end out of that play. And he can just follow Williams right in off tackle. It's happened more often than you might think. Quarterbacks with their teams with three losses or more taking home the Heisman the last two decades. It was Tebow in 07, RG3, and Lamar in 16. And Jaden Daniels putting together monster numbers. I mean, just straight video game numbers tonight. Nuts. They'll run it with Josh Williams. A duck inside, a bend outside, and he's got a first down. And you figure Cole with a 10 point lead under five to go in the fourth quarter. This is where it comes down to a game. Florida needs a stop desperate. Has to have a stop. This is nail and coffin time if you're LSU. You put a touchdown on the board, this game's over. But also still trying to play a little bit of four minute offense there. A nice bounce by Williams. He gets close to out of bounds. You see him go down. Keep that clock running. Haters do have three timeouts remaining. LSU is 682 yards of offense tonight. That's the fourth most in their program's history. Here's Williams. Daniels ran for 274 against Missouri. A rush defense going into that game that had only allowed 75 yards a game. You know, I will say, Tom, this is a look at this part of the offense that hasn't really been featured, hasn't been put in the spotlight. We asked Mike Denbrock about it. It, it feels like your offensive line's really good. You have good backs. Could you be a downhill run team if you wanted to? And he said, yeah, I think so. He said, I got a little pass happy last week. Easy to understand. Yeah. He also said, you know, I go into a game thinking, what is that number that we got to reach to win this game? And there's a run to pick up the first down. He said against Alabama that was 35. And so the pressure of trying to match Alabama by the way Jalen Milrow another fantastic game today. Alabama over Kentucky to start the day. Yeah, I think with the new Milrow we've seen the last couple of weeks that number is going to probably go up for a couple of teams. Yeah they put 49 hey, in Kentucky. Would you set the game clock to three minutes 16 seconds. Milrow three, threw one, for six. three and ran for three. First Alabama player to ever do that. Thank you. Chatting with Collins and Daniels all smiles right now. LSU record for total yardage came in 1977 against Rice. That was a 746 yard game. They're at 692 right now. What about the job this offensive line has done? They've it's taken me this long to ask you about it. They've been fantastic, and there have been some new looks from Austin Armstrong. He's overloaded the front to different sides at different times. It helps when you have a quarterback that can leave the pocket the way that Jaden Daniels can. But I feel like this group has played great football all season. We forget that Will Campbell and Emory Jones were true freshmen starting tackles a year ago. They got another one in Lance Hurd that started a couple of games this year. Timeout, LSU. The first LSU of the half. is averaging 11.9 yards per play. They're looking at a first and goal when we return.
Jaden Daniels and LSU, you know, we were scoffing earlier this season when the offenses of this year in 2019 were compared. There's only been one team in SEC history that averaged more than 11 and a half yards per play against a conference opponent. LSU tonight and LSU against Arkansas in 2019 when Joe Burrow's team averaged 12.8 yards per play. Uh, first and goal, they're able to pick up a yard and a half. And a timeout taken by Florida to stop the clock with 226. Well, the last three Heisman winning quarterbacks, Daniels currently has fewer interceptions than those three did. The only one who had a higher completion percentage than he has right now would have been Burrow in 19 at 76%. <laughs> Oh, it's ridiculous. And what a joy to spend time with Jaden Daniels, such an affable young player. And he told us about what he was looking for when he came here. You know, it kind of reminds me, we saw Paul Skeens and Dylan Cruz here tonight. They won a national championship for Jay Johnson on the baseball field for their riches in the major league level. And Dylan Cruz may be the best baseball player in LSU history, arguably, said, I didn't come here to be normal. I came here to be one of the greats. Jaden Daniels, even this close to Burrow's historic season, is going to leave here if he can continue this to close the season as one of the greats. There's no doubt about it. He'll have a couple more opportunities to do it. Non-conference game next week. He'll have a rivalry game against Texas A&M to be able to do it as well. He's not finished. Second and goal. Daniels has thrown for two and rushed for two tonight. Here's a little toss to Brian Thomas Jr. And it's another touchdown pass for Jaden Daniels, his third of the night. And this LSU offense looks unselfish with the way that they're blocking for their receivers tonight. How about Mac Markway, the tight end, and another for Thomas, who leads the country. 702 yards of offense. Well, watch running back. Josh Williams, 27, redirect. Oh, goodness. We call that a deep leader. I think Josh just got his invitation to the block party Monday night on Read and React. This is an LSU offense which was nearly unstoppable in the first half against Alabama. Daniels' injury and the interception in the second half turned that game. But here tonight, 702 yards of offense five second half possessions five second half touchdowns but it seems like you've never seen anything like it is because well you probably haven't ever seen anything like this today not much so this guy's been dynamic Tom and I think this is going to come down to what flavor ice cream you want when you're talking about your Heisman vote obviously Bo Nix Caleb Williams are going to be in the mix Michael Penix is going to be in the mix but to me I would look at it as who is most difficult to defend who's the hardest to stop and I don't know how you put anyone ahead of Jaden Daniels the accuracy that he has shown the ability to push the ball down the field it's not like he's dinking and dunking a bunch of these routes Tom mm. Mm. he lets balls go deep down the field making defenders miss in the open field obviously running away from DBs in the secondary I don't know what this young man cannot do, and I understand there have been a few blemishes on the record. This defense isn't good. But it's not. You're talking about LSU's defense? Correct, yes. Yeah. Correct. Yeah, where would they be with an average defense? But Florida's defense, which is getting shredded tonight, came in 44th in the nation in total defense. Tom, we've met with a couple defensive coordinators the week after or a couple weeks after they played this offense. We've heard from multiple DCs in this league say, yeah, I never seen anything like that. that. That's not supposed to happen. That's never happened to us before. That's what this offense is doing to people. They're putting numbers up on defensive coordinators and defenses and programs that have never happened in the history of them putting on uniforms. His LSU coming out party was really this Florida game last year. That was the one where Brian Kelly pulled him to the sideline before a snap and said, just go play football. By the way, that very next snap, he hooked up with Brian Thomas for a long touchdown pass. And my point about the defense was essentially saying I would not be one that would obsess about 
winning all of your games or only having one loss on the season. It's the most outstanding player as far as I'm concerned, and Jaden Daniels absolutely feels like that tonight. Mertz, last gasp for Florida, and he hooks up with the freshman Eugene Wilson, the third. 2.16 to play. Well, Malik Neighbors was telling us that when he went and visited with Jaden Daniels back in California this summer, he took him to all the great places. He took him to the Getty Center. He said, man, he took me to the museum. I didn't even know what I was looking at. But he also took him to the jewelry store where the Rams got their Super Bowl rings. I think there might be more bling coming for both of those guys. Montreal Johnson Jr. Nice job there by Graham Mertz, eluding the rush, changing the arm angle, getting that ball out. That's going to be a big question for this Florida football program moving forward. It's 15 going to be back, be a part of this team next year. I know that coaching staff would love to have it. Second and three, Florida. With 135 left, in desperate measure. They get two games left after tonight to reach bowl eligibility. To try and build that foundation for Billy Napier. You, you can be a coach that wins 59% of your games in Florida and be shown the door. Yes. The bar was set by the head ball coach and was followed by Urban. Those guys didn't just win a lot of games, they won the final game of the season. Spurrier once, Urban twice, and they really had a hard time repeating that consistently. I was talking with Scott Strickland, their athletic director before the game. He said, you're going to have dips at times. The key is to find a right coach who you're confident can take you through that dip. Look at what Kentucky did with Mark Soups. Look what Florida State has done with Mike Norvell in terms Absolutely. of being patient on the front end, being confident that you have the right guy, and now FSU sitting there at 10 and all do you want to build it do you want to have the structure of that program the foundation of that program to be solid if so it might not be 10 11 wins year one year two i have confidence that billy napier and his staff can get florida right it will take time going to take time you see the amount of youngsters that are competing on this field for this program tonight freshmen everywhere Burks a little bit late and behind his intended receiver, they made a decision when building this program because they, they had to rebuild from a recruiting standpoint. Cupboard empty. Do we take a chance to transfer guys? Do we take a chance to some guys who may not be familiar with the culture that we want here? Or do we build the old school way with young players and high school players and get to that point? And obviously, that was the decision this coaching staff made, backed by the administration. Well, if it's me, if you're, if I'm Florida, I'm going to build through high school recruiting because history tells me you can be successful doing that. That brand should allow that to happen. Multiple flags come down and Mertz will scramble out of bounds. And this holding will back it up. That's the other tough part of it, Tom. We talk about portal high school. Holding. Offense number 58, 10 yard penalty, second down. Well, look at the elite teams in this league, right? Look what Kirby Smart has done. Look how Alabama and Nick Saban have used the portal just to fill in places instead of be the foundation. It, what is right? What is wrong? I mean, I, I, don't, I don't know if we know. Remember Michigan State a couple of years ago? They took 28 guys in the portal and they were winning 9, 10 games. And everybody said, well, this is the future. You just go get, you just load up on as many experienced guys as you can and it's going to work. Well, it didn't work more than one year. You know, other teams have said that they're not going to go to the portal at all, or at least they shop and don't tell anybody, hadn't gotten anybody from there, and they're not doing the things that they've done in the past. Well, obviously, the answer is somewhere in the middle. And the answer is if we got multiple flags on this one, this is going to be holding again. Somewhere between Clemson and Ole Miss. 76, 10 yard penalty. There's a healthy down. point. And hey, it's working for Ole Miss. I know they got their rear ends handed to them by Georgia tonight, but. Lane's winning a lot of games by bringing in a lot of guys from the portal. 
But I agree with you. It, it has to be a healthy mix. When you're a program like Florida, I think the vast majority of that foundation can and probably should be through high school recruiting. You said they want to get Graham Mertz back again next year. Where would he go? Billy Napier told you when we met with him, the door has been reopened for him as a professional prospect to play quarterback. Second and 30. Nearly picked and bobbled. It was Major Burns who almost had it. That statement that you just made about Graham Mertz heading to the next level would not have been said when he was in Wisconsin. No, I think Graham Mertz has matured a lot. He has grown a lot. He has added a lot of tools to his game. He's a guy that had his own logo at Wisconsin. He was throwing a lot of interceptions. He's do you a have a logo? I do not. Yeah. Very, if you did, what would it be? Probably something with a C and a square. Uh, I don't know. Mertz slings it outside on. He finds Montreal Johnson. Found some space. I'll bring up fourth and 12 now for Florida with a 107 to go and counting. And you think about that portion take, of time out take. Tom, Billy Napier and his, his staff, they're not going to have the ties back to Lafayette Florida. to be able to recruit by. That's a big part of what he brought with him. And he knows at Florida what the challenges are and where the bar is set. Head ball coach and Urban left the swamp with some hardware. Spurrier, 82% winning percentage, won it all in 96. Urban right behind him. Muschamp won 58%, not good enough. McElwain, 65%, got some hot water. Won the SEC twice, and Napier finished below 500. Let's say find something in the last two games as they continue to try to build this foundation in the Sunshine State. Have you seen that schedule next year? Not pretty. Whew. It will take time. You're going to have to build. A lot of young players have played this year. They can be competitive next year. And I think you can, if you can bring a veteran quarterback to return to your roster that knows that scheme, knows that offense, it's going to put you way ahead of the curve as opposed to maybe even where you were beginning this season. Gators out of timeouts. Four man rush. Got a hand on Mertz but couldn't bring him down. And off balance. And that is Eugene Wilson with a catch and a first down for Florida. That accuracy on the run, a real strength in Graham Mertz's game that he's been able to show off a lot this year. Wilson goes his tight end, Arliss Boardingham. Second year freshman from Van Nuys, California. You know, Tom, I'll say this too. We talk a lot about that Florida program. We talked a lot about Jaden Daniels, but in this new era of college football where it feels like everyone is anxious for players to not play or to go do something else, for Brian Kelly and his staff to have these guys ready tonight, show up and play the way that they played, to put on this performance that they did this evening, when a lot of people didn't know what to expect, mentally, emotionally, didn't know where they would be, pretty impressive. That's complete the boarding him. How do you feel about that as a guy who played in this league that thought that some media members are saying, oh, no, shut it down. Your team goals are gone. I hate it. It drives me crazy. It, it infuriates me. It's not right uh, because you can talk about the value of one individual, what he might have at the next level, but there's a lot of other players on that team that helped him gain that value. Why should that player not stay and help those other players raise their value a little bit more with a little bit of game tape that they're going to have left to be able to put on for even the XFL or the USFL, whatever that becomes, or the NFL or anything else? Well, Jaden Daniels' week started when he was still in concussion protocol. He did not practice with the team on Tuesday. There's a major question Illegal mark as to whether or not he defense, play tonight. 12 players on the field at the distance Boy, of the goal. We play first down. He's led LSU to a 700-yard night. And the Tigers still have a lot of team goals within their sights.
Mertz finds Johnson and incomplete. And I'll be honest with you, Tom, maybe the most agitating part of it is we've seen a lot of clips, a lot of pictures. Our crew's doing a good job getting a lot of shots at Jaden Daniels on the sideline. Look at him right here. Look at that smile. Here's what we forget a lot of times. Football's freaking fun, man. And you know what's even more fun than just playing football? Being as good as number five playing football. I cannot imagine. I was a very average college football player. To be that good at that position, wearing that uniform? Of course it's fun. I get Georgia State next week. They close with Texas A&M. That game might take seven hours. Mertz looking in zone. Off the crossbar. And leaves him third and goal, trying to find Boardingham. Would Vern Lundquist count that as a doink? I believe so. Uncle Vern saw plenty of these great LSU Florida games. Never one like this, though. Mertz in zone, incomplete. Fourth and goal. One last play for Florida that matters a ton to some. 32 seconds left. Fourth and goal for Grand Mertz in Florida. And it's batted away and falls incomplete. And that's how this one will come to a close. We appreciate all of our servicemen and women on this Veterans Day. And a hearty thank you to those on our crew, including Sean Erickson, our ops producer, Chan Hartsock, our graphics interface coordinator, Michael Oklo, the utility, spent four years in the United States Army, Sergeant First Class David Myers, and Vince Tuggle. We get David up here to protect us, which is really important because a couple of years ago at Arkansas, they pulled off a win at the Barry Inn, and Barry Odom, their defensive coordinator, came by the booth to high-five me and Jordan, and our man put him up against the wall. <laughs> <laughs> and we said, you can't do that. To an Arkansas coach, he said, I, I got to protect you guys. But the boy did he's having. Thank you to all the men and women that served. We all appreciate you. Napier and Kelly with handshakes. Florida has two more chances to get to bowl eligibility. Meanwhile, Brian Kelly and his program don't just have a Heisman contender. It seems like they have the Heisman favorite. Right now, he is with Alyssa Lane. Jaden, you had a different week of practice this week. How are you able to prepare to have the performance that you had tonight? I mean, the same way I always prepare. You know, still doing the same thing, same routine. A little limited, though, but uh, even though I wasn't out there physically most of the time, you know, just mentally preparing myself, uh, you know, and preparing like I was going to play this week. You broke an FBS record tonight. You're now the only quarterback in FBS history to throw for over 350 yards and rush for over 200 yards. What does putting one more thing in the history book mean to you? Uh, it means a lot. I mean, I thank God, you know, for everything, you know, the talent that he gave me and everything. I thank my old line. You know, I can't do this without them at all. Speaking of that, how are you able to be so confident as a runner every time you take off? Yeah, I mean, that's just who I was as a, as a young kid, you know, uh, you know, backyard, you know, playing in the street, stuff like that. So you come out of the football field, you're just having fun. We saw you hit the Heisman pose. What did your teammates say about that one? They're the ones that wanted me to hit it. So, you know, uh, we'll see. You know, just got to keep going on. Next week, we got Georgia State. So, you know, prepare, prepare for a new week. Congrats on the win, Jaden. Thank you. He threw for 372. He <laughs> ran for 234. Five touchdowns accounted for. And Jaden Daniels took a big old bite out of this Florida defense tonight. Hugs all the way around. This was fun. 
For Cole Kilblick, Alyssa Lang, and our fantastic crew, I'm Tom Hart. The final score, LSU 52 behind 701 yards of offense and Florida 35. Let's get you to the studio. Here's Dari Noko. That is, uh, that is some performance.